Rainy Portage Stadium. Welcome to week number seven of the high school football season. With Ward Hilliard, I'm Mark Burdig on WCCS. And if you're watching here on Render Digital TV, that guy is Ward Hilliard, and he's been alongside since 1994. And Ward, we've had great weather to start the football season, but we knew it was going to turn eventually, and turn it did. Well, it's been, it's nasty. It's like a monsoon. It's been a steady rain, and it's coming straight down, so it's not getting blown out of here. We're hoping it does before the game starts. This is an important game for Homer. It could turn their season if they could win it. Uh, that's a tall, tall challenge on this field. We thank the Portage School District for making the accommodations for both radio and video. They have an outstanding press box, this historic stadium that dates back to the 1930s. And uh, they're going to be undergoing, and uh, the WCCS executive producer of Wildcat Sports, Michael Burdick, doubles as the school board president. So, Michael, pay attention. <laughs> they're about to undergo $1.25 million in renovations and John Smathers on our digital stream is showing this historic stadium which is pretty cool when you come in all stone uh, you know it looks like a college stadium from behind on a smaller scale obviously but they had some problems with the bleachers and the infrastructure the steel was deteriorating in the concrete so they approved a $400,000 uh, fix for that. The middle bleachers tonight will not be used. As a matter of fact, I see on the opposite side, they have them ripped out as they just approved that about a month ago. And then they just approved a $110,000 uh, study with an architectural firm that will be um, putting together, they'll be designing a state-of-the-art locker room for the visiting and uh, opposing teams. As it is now, the schools, uh, the teams have to dress and come down from the high school. They've found that, uh, you know, the locker rooms aren't going to be able to be used. They were a little outdated here, so they're going to build a new field house, and it will house the visiting and the home team. That will be about three-quarters of a million dollars before that's said and done. And it'll be near the baseball field and the end zone here, so they'll be able to get multi-use uh, out of it. So all told, about $1.25 million in renovations coming to this stadium where Jerry Page played the first ever Portage High School game in 1948, Ward Hilliard. How about that stat? That, that's, that's amazing stat. That's the year I was born. <laughs> and that goes way back. I, I love this place. It just It's a throwback to the 20s. It seems like you're in an Ivy League school here, uh, the way the stadium is set up. And, the, the boy, these schools and these renovations, it's amazing to me. Good luck. I did ask Coach Page about that on the pregame show. Michael, you may want to pay attention to his answer uh, when I mentioned the visiting and home locker room uh, <laughs> building that's going to be uh, coming here. Hey, this is an important game. Both teams are two and four. This is a loaded question, but do you know the last time that both the Mustangs and the Wildcats, both storied programs, were under 500 six weeks into the season? Well, I have to go back a ways. I don't know, though. 1998. Wow. Is the last time they were both under 500. They were both two and four. They both finished under 500 in 2011, but Portage was three and three after six weeks. I'll tell you something else. For Wildcat fans, it's been forever since they've won a football game on this field. This is only the 12th all-time meeting. Homer Center owns a 6-5 edge. Coach Page, though, has never won here at Portage Stadium. It's amazing, is it not? It's it's something that you really wouldn't think about, but uh, Portage is tough to beat on this field. We've always said that, Not whether it's Homer Center or any other team out of the conference. So, uh, it's going to be that way again tonight. And because of the, the, the travel and the, the the thing that they had to do pregame, uh, it's going to make it even more awkward. It's tough to when you have to, as a visiting team, dress at the school and come down to the stadium, you know, Ward. Uh, yeah, I th think there's another school in the conference that does that. Yeah, yeah. Homer Center is currently ranked eighth in the PIAA District 6 playoff rankings, while Portage only 10 points behind them in ninth place. Top eight teams qualify. If you want to get into the playoffs and taste that experience, both of these teams are young. Portage uh, with only six seniors, second fewest in the conference behind Homer Center, who has five. So it would behoove you to want to win this game because Homer Center is staring ahead at a trip to West Shemokin and then a home game with Purchase Line before finishing the regular season at home against Connemaw Valley. And um, Connemaw Valley may be the only game where they're going to be favored. 
And the same thing for Portage. After tonight, they go to United Valley. At Penn's Manor won't be easy. And then they finish out at home against River Valley. So Ooh. their remaining games are very, very difficult. So I think the winner of this game may have the upper hand uh, for maybe trying to sneak into the playoffs as a lower seed. Yeah, the, the teams below these guys really, uh, I don't think, are a threat. So the, this is these are the two that are going to battle for that lower spot. And as we said, this is a big game for the Wildcats. They need to turn their season. This would be the time to do it. Portage's two wins came in the opening two weeks of the season against teams that were are still winless, Connemaw Valley and Connemaw Township. They've lost four in a row. It's the first time they've lost four games in a row since 1992 when they started 0-4 before finishing 3-7. and So hard times here at Portage, although they did give purchase line fits last week, and the Red Dragons are a very strong ball club at 5-1. and one. Yeah, you just uh, we've said it all along. You just never know in this conference. These teams all are pretty balanced, and there's a couple that are a little stronger than others, but every once in a while, just like last week, Portage uh, snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, so to speak, and, and and lost a game they could have very easily won. And there was a game against Connemaw Township when they trailed big and came racing back to defeat the Indians 37-34 to 34 right here. Uh, so you just never know from week to week. You can pretty much throw all that stuff out. <laughs> Marion Center uh, defeated Portage. Homer Center defeated Marion Center. What does that mean? Nothing. Nothing. We're going to come back on our ITT pregame show, chat a little bit more. Also, you'll hear from head coach Marty Slonick and Greg Page. We'll have the Luther Ford keys to the game, the starting lineups, and more when we continue from Rainy Portage Stadium. But first, we're going to take you on a trip around the Heritage Conference. There's a lot of key matchups tonight. Jake Slobotnik will tell you all about it coming up next as we continue on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. It's week seven of the IRMC high school football season and things are becoming more clear in terms of District 6 playoff rankings, but there's still a heated race for the Heritage Conference title. Hi everyone, this is Jake Slobodnik previewing this week's slate of games with our trip around the Heritage Conference. All eyes, or ears that is, will be on our U92 Heritage Conference Game of the Week as the United Valley Lions look to stay undefeated against the 5-1 Purchase Line Red Dragons. Should the Lions win, they'll be the clear-cut favorite to take home the conference title, but the Red Dragons look to put a rift in their season. You can hear the game on the new U92.5 FM and U92Radio.com with Todd Marino. Meanwhile, two 5-1 teams clash in Salzburg as River Valley and defending District 6 champion Northern Cambria look to keep their respective winning streaks alive. As of tonight, the Panthers are in fourth place in Class 2A, while the Colts hold the third spot in 1A. I have the call with Chuck Clark on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. On WCCS and Renda Digital TV, Portage looks to snap a four-game losing streak while Homer Center seeks retribution after last week's loss to Cambria Heights. Mark Birding and Ward Hilliard have the call from Portage on WCCS, WCCSradio.com, and Renda Digital TV presented by the Grayson Coral Sportsman's Club. Other Heritage Conference games this week feature Connemaw Valley and Connemaw Township in Davidsville as both teams look for their first win of the year. Marion Center and Penn's Manor Tangle at Pat Corrigan Field looking to bounce back off of losses last week. And West Shemokin welcomes Cambria Heights to Jack Boyer Stadium. Kickoff for all games tonight is 7 o'clock. If you miss any of the action, tune in Saturday morning to the Luther Ford Lincoln Coaches Corner program on WDAD and WDADradio.com. That's all for now. Good luck to all teams competing tonight. I'm Jake Slobodnik, and I'll see you next week when we take another trip around the Heritage Conference. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. Every moment. 
Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group. Our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty. That's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Hip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. Hello, this is the ITT pregame show continues presented by Indiana Total Therapy, world class rehabilitation, Indiana Total Therapy with three locations, ITT Blairsville, ITT at the Human Motion Institute at IRMC and ITT West on Chelly Drive in Indiana. All right, we are synced back up on radio and Renda Digital TV as we say hello to tonight's spotter, Jim McLaughlin, who just walked into the booth, and our statistician, Jerry Rossi. Did you see the limo along the way? Jerry's <laughs> on his way, too. What I mention, 12th all-time meeting. Homer Center owns a 6-5 edge. They've uh, had a tough time winning in this old stadium, which dates back to the 1930s, as I mentioned. You know, we can pick on Jim, too, uh, because we were picking on Michael. Jim's on the board about the <laughs> $1.25 million renovation coming here. But we won't. We won't do that with Jim because he's doing us a favor tonight and helping us. Last year, you remember the game between these two teams? It was one of yes. two heartbreaking losses yes. for Homer Center. The other against West Shemokin on a Hail Mary as time expired. Portage scored with 26 seconds remaining on a one-yard Isaac Jabina touchdown run to a race of 25 21 deficit at memorial field they won 28 to 25 for jabina it was one of four rushing touchdowns in that football game as the mustangs rolled up 363 yards of offense outgaining homer center 356 to 257 they rushed for 328 Jabina had 116. Isaac Walinski was also a thorn in their side. 99 rushes on 13 carries. And Jabina is back uh, and has done a good job for Portage this year. He's only a, a junior, but he's already rushed this season for 579 yards, scoring seven touchdowns. So they run an offense that Homer Center, quite frankly, has had difficult defending the old wing tee, although they do a few different variations than Penn's Manor. Yeah, Jabino just had a, a terrific night. He was hard to bring down. Homer just had fits with him, and any time they needed a few yards, they gave it to him. Nothing spectacular, but just hard nose, and he, he was, was all positive. Walensky and uh, their quarterback, Easton Slonick, have combined to score 92 of the Mustangs, 124 points scored. Walensky has 48 points, while Slonick, the um, sophomore quarterback, has accounted for 44 points. I mentioned the Portage ties here at, uh, for the Page family. Coach Greg Page's late father, Jerry, grew up and attended Portage. Back then, Portage Borough and Portage Township, they eventually merged. And uh, Jerry Page in 1948 played the first ever game as a junior for Portage Joint High School. They finished 4-4-1. and one. In his senior year, the Mustangs went 6-3-1. and one. And you remember their longtime coach here, Gary Gauss. His dad, Wally Gauss, was a member of that team and a classmate of Jerry Page. So I, I'm sure it's a, kind of a special feeling for uh uh, Coach Page to come here. I don't know that it was on our pregame interview, which just a few minutes ago, a few minutes away, but on our Facebook preview that I did with the coach yesterday, he said that he got a stern message from mom, who also graduated in class, uh, I think it was the class of 1957. He said, You tell the boys to go over there and beat Portage. So he said, I relate it to them. I don't know. I hope they listen, he said. You know, and I think uh, former Homer coach Buff Fanella had some ties to Portage. Uh, he might have gone to school here for a while, but I know that he knew Jerry Portage, or Jerry Portage, Jerry Page through that relationship there. But 
Great. Uh, I, I think the, uh, the rain's still coming down. It's not quite so hard, though. Maybe that's good news. We were so. told maybe it would be out of here around 8 o'clock, and uh, Jim McLaughlin confirming that. We do appreciate Jim helping us out, and uh, we want to say hello to Dennis Mester and also our buddy. We talked to him on the way yes, over. Sir. We're going to be in trouble. We're going to get a licking if we don't stop at the rack from Jimmy Sutter. <laughs> Jimmy so, Jimmy, Sutter. if you're already tuned in, hello, Jimmy. We, we know you're... Uh, recovering and rehabbing at Indian Haven, and we wish you the best of luck. We hope you enjoy tonight's broadcast, and we hope you enjoy the coaches' interviews because they're up next. First up, Marty Slonick in his third season. He's 14 and 12, 538 winning percentage because of the COVID years and everything. He's only played Homer Center one time. There, he's 1 and 0 against Homer Center that victory last year. And head coach Greg Page in his 17th season, 112 and 72, 609 winning percentage. He is 2 and 4. He's had a tough time against these Mustangs. So those interviews are coming up next when our ITT pregame show continues from Portage Stadium right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Hello, this is Jay and Shannon from Hutton Blues Insurance. We pride ourselves on building strong personal relationships with our clients. We are an independent agency offering you the best coverage at the best rate. When you buy insurance, whether it's for your home, car, business, or life, you want an advocate working in your best interests. And that's Hutton Blues Insurance, Route 119 North, just outside of Indiana. We're also honored to have been voted in the top two insurance companies in the 2324 Best of Indiana County Contest. Thank, Thank you, Indiana, Indiana County. County. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd's? Welcome back to our ITT pregame show. Mark Burdick with you as we come to you from Portage Stadium and head coach Marty Slonick of the Portage Mustangs. And coach, you come off of a tough loss last week to purchase line. You jumped out in front. I know there's no such thing as moral victories, but even in the loss, I think you saw some growth with your football team against a very good Red Dragons ball club. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. There's, there's no moral victories. We're a proud program and we're a proud group where our goal is to compete and compete in every game. We, we've seen some improvement in certain aspects but uh in others we haven't and we're hoping to just continue to move on and get better as a whole unit is it a matter of just being consistent on both sides of the ball yeah that's for sure i mean consistency you know with high school kids is what you strive for you know as a coaching staff we to keep preaching it and stay on them and continue to do that and as the players they need to buy in and do their part as well you know we're seeing it at times and then we're seeing it on the other side as well and you know it's just a continual process and hopefully it comes together soon you mentioned the 
Portage program being a proud program, and I think you could say the same thing about your opponent tonight, Homer Center. Marty, it's been a long time. I look back since Homer Center and Portage have both been under 500 six weeks into a season. I think 1998 was the last time that's happened, and you you both have young teams. They only have five seniors. They have six, but I think probably Coach Page would agree, too. You reach the midway point and beyond of this season. You can't really use that as an excuse any longer either. No, yeah. I mean, it's high school football. Excuses don't get you anywhere. They don't do anything. Maybe make people complacent. So no matter what injuries, whatever's going to happen, kids graduate, that's going to happen. You just have to replace, keep moving. And you're right, Homer Center, I mean, listen, Coach Page, there's not a coach around here that I don't have you know more or as much respect for than Coach Page. He's been doing this a long time. We've had some great games over the years. It's always something special when we play each other, and I'm really looking forward to this one. Of course, there's a little bit of history with the Page family and Portage High School, right? I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Oh, yeah, very aware. His father graduated from Portage. Mm -hmm. He was on the uh, first Portage football team when the Portage Borough and the Portage Township joined. He was on that, and I remember years ago when I was an assistant, and we honored that group, oh, I'd have to say it was probably 60 years, so maybe 2010 or somewhere. He was there. I've known Coach Coach Page's father as well. He was a coach when I played, Coach Baseball, and I just always knew him and respected him a lot as well. Well, what about the scouting report as you see Homer Center? I see Homer Center getting better every week, and that doesn't surprise me. I know last year we both went in with identical records at 3-2. and two. He had given up 40-some points in a game, and then the next week shuts out the team that ends up winning the district title in Northern Cambria. So, I, I mean, I expect nothing but a disciplined, hard-nosed, prepared team that we're going to play Friday. We just have to try to do the things that we can do in our control to uh, come out on top. They've had trouble against the run, uh, and you do like to run the football. We do. You know, we like to run the ball. We have a motto, you know, if a team can't run, they can't win. And if you can't run, you can't win. It, it's tough in high school football to just win by throwing it. But I think there has to be a little bit of a balance. And, you know, we've done that and in the last few weeks. We've done a little bit more of it, and we're, we're getting there. You know, there's a lot of things that play into that. But, yeah, if we didn't ever have to throw the ball, I don't think any coach really would. They'd like to, if it's easy to run it, run it. But they have to play off each other. Coach, I appreciate you doing this. Look forward to the matchup tonight here at Portage Stadium. And I know there's going to be some work going on at the stadium, too, repairing these bleachers, right? Yeah, our locker room used to be under the bleachers. I mean, that's no longer going to be the case. I mean, the stadium's from the 30s. They're going to redo some of the concrete, and they're going to build a new locker room that'll be ready for next fall for both teams down in the corner between the baseball field. And that will be able to use in the spring as well. So the next time uh, you guys are up, it'll be a little bit of a different place. Marty, thanks for doing this interview. Good luck tonight and uh, the rest of the way as well. All right, thank you. Head coach Marty Slonick of the Portage Mustangs. We're coming back with more. We'll visit with Wildcat head coach Greg Page when our ITT pregame show continues right here on the IRMC WCCS Football Network. Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122, or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. At Mark Arbuckle Nissan here in downtown Indiana, we sell more new Titans than any other dealer in our region of the country. That's because we have more Titans to choose from, and we give great deals on new Titans every day. And there'll never be a better time to buy your new Titan truck than right now. And there's no better place to buy your new Titan truck than Mark Arbuckle Nissan. That's Mark Arbuckle Nissan, because if you buy a Nissan someplace else, you'll pay more money. I'm Will Jones. I motion get. We never drop the ball on the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore if your wall back insurance needs. Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallbeck Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallbeck Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbeckinsurance.com. Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in a club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. 
proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. So what sets s and apart from other financial institutions is that they are visionary. Now, we understand that it is partially about the numbers, but they know it's not just about the numbers. It's about the management team, it's about the strategic and business plan, it's about how the team is going to execute on that. In short, s and gets it. Quite honestly, we couldn't have done it without s and Welcome back to Portage Stadium as we continue on our ITT pregame show with the head coach Greg Page show, as always, presented and insured by the Walbeck Insurance Agency Main Street in Homer City. Stop by and see Rob and his team. Get an instant quote by visiting WalbeckInsurance.com. Coach, I'm going to start with some sad news because I, I know uh, you knew Ron Jones and Wildcat Nation was saddened to learn of the passing of a former Homer Center multi-sport standout. I uh, was friends with Ron, a classmate, class of 78. He was a part of Ron Coleman's undefeated team in 1977, just an all-around good guy. And I know you knew him, and uh, he and Monica's children, uh, Matthew and Lindsay, probably taught them here at Homer Center. We lost a good one way too young. I, yeah, he was, uh, as far as the athletic part, I know he was a great one here during a great era. Um, we were fortunate to get to know him and Monica through some social outings over the last several years. And uh, I loved the smile and the laugh and just a lot of good conversations. And we coached Matt here. And, and uh, like you said, I, I taught both children. And I think it's a great family. I, I think it's just it's tragic when anyone passes away, but that's just not – an old age either and um so I, I feel for them and I know our our community does too. Yeah, we extend sympathies to all of the Ron Jones family, the Laser family of course. Well coach, here we are at Portage Stadium as we shift gears, one of my favorite places to come and an old stadium built in the 1930s and I know one that uh, has special meaning to you. Your late father Jerry grew up here. Your mom also graduated from here. Your dad was part of the First Portage Joint High School football team. I think he was a junior in 1948. That's going back some years, isn't it? That is going back away. Yeah, I used to rib him about that, but uh, he'd laugh, and he was proud of that. He's proud of his Portage roots, as was my mom. There's still plenty of relatives there, um, mostly on her side, the Gentile side. Um, that was her maiden name, but uh, they both grew up there, and just a lot of pride. And you know, we were we were taught that, and and uh, we we. Uh, took a lot of that in growing up as kids, going to visit relatives and such. So it is, it does hold a special place for me too. Um, unfortunately, we're still looking for our first win there, so hopefully that comes tonight as well. You're not going to talk about the train on this segment. I know you did yesterday on our Facebook preview. No, I think I butchered that part enough. Uh, there is a train that goes by. It makes a noise sometimes. <laughs> I butchered that on the Facebook part, so we'll just leave it at that. But it is a really cool atmosphere. Hey, this place is going to undergo a $1.25 million makeover, repairing the old stands. Some of you, some of the bleachers not in use tonight. Uh, construction of a new home and away locker room so teams don't have to go to the school first. Hey, Coach, hint, hint, uh, maybe not a bad idea. Oh, well, I maybe I shouldn't say too much, but I think it's a tremendous idea. <laughs> going to leave it at that? You're going to leave it? Wow, that was a short response. <laughs> I'll leave it at that, yeah. It'd be nice to – it's it's nice when people get to do those kind of things. Coach, for the first time, going to be faced with cooler, damp conditions, rain expected uh, throughout the evening. Pretty tough to prepare for that with the stretch of weather we've had in the first six weeks of the season. Yeah, and I saw it's on the horizon, and hopefully it's not too bad. But you know what? Both teams have to deal with it. Um, you know, we have some things in place in case it gets to that point where it might be real tricky. I hope not. But when it comes down to it, you have to be able to handle the football. You have to be able to handle your footing, uh, control yourself just a little bit more. But, again, it works both ways. So if it comes, we'll be ready for it. Quick look back to last week. We talked on the post-game show and Ward and I during the broadcast that we saw. We thought we saw some growth from the team last week. After you reviewed the video, did you come away with the same conclusions? Yeah, but the frustrating part was the, the start. Uh, the start of it, it basically felt like it, we were in a hole two scores right away. Again, uh, that's hard to overcome. We're getting better offensively with, uh, you know, Braden's getting more experience at quarterback, and I think he's continued to – to progress at a, at a good level each week. Uh, defensively, after that start, I mean, I felt like at times we played well, but 
uh, ultimately they controlled the game, and that's the frustrating thing. And it it started from the beginning, and we have to we just have to come out of it a lot quicker. Well, both teams two and four. My records say that's the first time that these two proud programs have been sub 500 after six weeks of the season. Uh, since 1998 for Portage. They've lost four straight games. They hadn't done that since 1992 when they lost the first two games of the season. So you probably hate facing teams on a four-game slide. No, but, I mean, we were on a three-game one there, and it's it, it gets tough. I mean, you know, you hope your kids are still buying in. I think Marty's been around that program a long time. He's only been the head coach for a couple years, but he knows the pulse of his kids in the program, and I, I don't expect anything less than their best. I mean, they p- purchased lines five and one, and they went toe to toe with them. So it's been a concern all week. Um, you know, we have our own things to clean up. So I hope we're extra motivated, given the fact that we were in the win column and then, you know, came back last week and didn't get it done. Some fans would say, hey, their two wins came against winless Connemaw Township and Connemaw Valley. They lost to Marion Center. The Wildcats defeated the Stingers. I don't really buy into that, and I'm sure you don't either. Uh, some may say you're the, you're the favorite, but you just summed it up with what they did against Purchase Line. And they, they run an offense that, frankly, has given uh, your team fits uh, at different times. It has. It has. Uh, you know, Penn's Manor runs a slightly different version of the wing tee, and, and we had trouble with them. Uh, Portage just executes so well. I mean, they've expanded and are doing a little bit, a few more different things, but by and large, it's the same fundamental stuff, and they're really good at it. Isaac Walensky can be a handful from that wing slot. He is, yeah, and I think if they get another kid back and move Nesbella to fullback, um, he's a he's a good runner. The quarterback does a nice job. I mean, he's um, coach's son, and he's a sophomore, but he's very poised and has a good arm. I mean, they. Now, with that dimension, they make you, you know, really defend the whole field. Other than the obvious, keys for you tonight? Well, you know, the obvious is we got to get lined up and tackle better. We, we can't let teams get rip off the big plays. I think limiting big plays, being more aggressive and physical defensively. And offensively, it's the same old thing. I mean, we're progressing a little bit in the run game, but we've got to be stronger there, um, especially if we have conditions with the weather. Um, and, you know, limit the mistakes. That's always a cliche, but um, we, we just have to, we have to, we have to be the front runners tonight. We have to get things going first. Usually teams that can run the ball and stop the run. I like your chances. Coach, good luck here tonight. Thank you guys very much. Head coach Greg Page is always presented by Wallbeck Insurance, the Luther Ford keys to the game with Ward Hilliard. We'll see if Ward agrees with the coach's assessment when we return on the ITT pregame show on the IRMC Wildcat Football Network. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, drive off in a new F-Series truck, Ford Ranger, Ford Maverick, or the all-electric F-150 Lightning. Check out the Ford Bronco, Bronco Sport, Eco Sport, Escape, Explorer, Expedition, Edge, and Mustang Mach-E. And always look at the exciting Ford Mustang. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations, Route 119 Homer City and Admiral Perry Highway, Evansburg. LutherFord.com. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net.
Portage Marching Band performing the national anthem as it pours down rain. That can't be easy playing those instruments. When we pulled in, we thought, wow, that's a big band. We could hear them from behind the wall of this historic stadium. And then we walked in, and it was Portage, Homer Center, and St. Francis. They're going to do a halftime show, hopefully weather permitting here, combined effort. Word, what about the keys to the game driven by Luther Ford Lincoln? Well, if you're Portage, the uh, first thing you want to do is stop Homer's running game. Just stop it cold, keep them inside, force them into the air. Uh, Portage, on the other hand, they want to establish a run game inside, outside. That's what they're good for. Homer's ends are going to be severely challenged, as are the inside backers. And finally, it's a wet night. Don't turn the ball over. Don't give the Wildcats any chance to think they're being in the ball game. Homer Center, on the other hand, keep trying to get that run game working. It's got to go for them to have any success tonight. Defensively, tackle. They got to be able to tackle, especially that fullback, Joe Bina, coming through the line. They got to stop him first. That's what everything is well, built around. And then finally, uh, Homer needs to create some turnovers to give themselves a shorter field. All right, keys to the game driven by Luther Ford. We're going to step right back out, come back with our main chiropractic starting lineups. The Portage Mustangs and the Homer Center Wildcats in this 12th all-time meeting between the two schools. Homer Center owning a 6-5 edge. Starting lineups up next as our ITT pregame show continues from Portage Stadium on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your local Erie agent is William G. Meckling Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 724-465-4261 or visit mecklinginsurance.com. Area rate lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats! from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd's? At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Be back to Portage Stadium. The officials are on the field. The Wildcats have just come out of their locker room, and we are counting it down to tip off between these two schools with such good programs. The Wildcats, four time champions in District 6, despite all of their success, Ward Portage has never won a district title. No, they have not. That's got to be frustrating. Uh, maybe getting into this conference will help now. Let's give you the starting line of Ford Portage. Owen Gauss will be the left end, a junior 5'10", 130. Left tackle, this is a good one. Nick Somerville, senior, 6'2", 220. He's every bit of that, too. Left guard is Jacob Nolan, 5'7", 157, 157 pounds, senior. Skyler Scarton is the center, senior, 6'3", 290. Adam Ritchie is the uh, right guard, senior, 5'9", 195. Joshua Harshberger, the right tackle, 6'1", 255. Bodie Leo, that's a good basketball player, too. A junior, 6'3", 215 is the tight end. Quarterback, 
Easton Slonick, he's a sophomore, 5'10", 165. The fullback is Trent Nisbella, not Jabina. <laughs> Jabina has had graduated, my error. Uh, he's a senior, 5'10", 170. One wing back will be Brendan Smithrow, junior, 6'190". The other wing back, Isaac Walensky, junior, 6'1", 190. The Portage Mustangs starting lineup on offense, and the Wildcats, as produced by Chris Garitano, faculty member at Homer Center, runs the comm media department, does an outstanding job. You'll see it on Renda Digital TV. You'll see the players introducing themselves, and on WCCS, you'll hear their voices, too. Here we go with the Wildcats starting lineup. I'm Brady Todd, I'm 5'9", 160 pounds, and I play quarterback. Jackson Rose, 6'1", 165 pounds, wide receiver, free safety. Hi, my name is Dan Jones, I am 5'9", and I am 143 pounds, and I play corner and receiver. Hi, my name is Will Jones, I'm 5'11", 152 pounds, and I play wide receiver. Landon Hill, 6'1", 205 pounds, play running back and outside linebacker. Hi, my name's Caleb Palmer. I'm a six foot, 200 pound tight end and outside linebacker. All right, my name is Garrett Green. I'm 6'1", 220 pounds, and I play right tackle and DN, roll tide. I'm Cade Bernard. I'm 5'10", 195. I play right guard. Hi, my name is Zach Wilson. I'm 5'9", 245 pounds, and I play center. I'm Josh Luchuk. I'm 170 pounds, and I play left guard. Hi, I'm Elijah Butterly. I'm 5'11", 245 pounds. I play left tackle and right defensive end. I'm Brady Fraser. I'm a 6'1", 160 pound kicker and punter. Here at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville has once again not gone unnoticed. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge was voted the best urgent care and walk-in clinic in the best of Indiana County contest, and it's no wonder at Urgent Care they fast-track you, they get you in and out seven days a week from 8 till 8. Old Route 22 in Blairsville, a part of the IRMC family. Better health, better life. That's the ITT pregame show. Stay with us for the start of tonight's game coming up next on the IRMC Wildcat Football Network. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? The gang's all here at Portage Stadium. With Ward Hilliard, I'm Mark Burdick, our executive producer on the video side, our digital manager at Renda Media. He does work for Indiana, Punxsy and Greensburg, John Smathers. Michael Burdick, the radio engineer, our statistician who just had the nice limo ride over, the only sponsored statistician in the conference, Jerry Rossi. Our spotter is Jim McLaughlin, and we are set to go. The Wildcats won the toss and elected to receive Ward. Yes, That's different. It is. Kick picked up by Dan. Danny Jones at the 19-yard line. Actually, that's Will Jones, and he's up over the 25, up near the 28 or 29. On the kick coverage team, Connor Bineau of the Portage Mustangs. The kickoff, by the way, presented by Grand Beginnings Children's Center. Get your children ready to shine at Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana. So four seconds into this game, the Wildcats in these rainy conditions. The rain's still coming down straight it's not a windy night at all no, that's what going to be a wet football they start at their own 29 yard line Good. on the right hash wide side of the field toward the wildcat bench and taking the direct snap is Braden Dunn and he hands to Landon Hill who is over the 30 up to about the 32 or 33 yard line where he's tackled by a guy that you gave some credit to young man by the name of Nick Somerville on the tackle ward Hilliard on the defensive side 
Somerville is the defensive tackle. Big boy, I saw him on the sideline before the game, and uh, he's every bit of 220. Sidecar to the left heel, and Hill, they fake it to him. Read option, and Braden Dunn's going to keep it. He's hit and dropped immediately by Logan Grove, a defensive end, a six foot, 235 pound junior. The Mustangs on defense start three seniors, five juniors, and three sophomores. By the way, something that we will keep an eye on tonight. Landon Hill needed 12 carries tonight to reach 500 rushes in his career. He needs 35 yards to move up the ladder on the all-time list, too. Third down and about six to go, ball near the center of the field, and Braden going to keep it. And Braden makes a cut, and he's going to get to about the 37-yard line. Owen Gauss, the nephew of the former coach, Gary Gauss, makes the tackle, so it's an early decision for Greg Page. They're going to put the football down at the 37, so they'll be two yards shy of the first down, and it looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field in these soggy conditions. That play had some promise, but it was not blocked well enough downfield to let Braden get the extra yardage. H back right is Hill. They load up short side and they fake it to Landon Hill. Braden Dunn going to keep it, trying to bounce it outside, and he's fighting for yardage, but he's not going to get there. Stopping him was Trent Nesbella, third leading tackler on the team, along with Easton Slonick, and the Wildcats turn it over on downs. That was a risky move, mainly because Homer's had very little success running the ball this year. And Coach Page trying to do anything to build, get a spark out of this offense just wasn't meant to be there. So Portage will start at the Homer Center 37 with 10.28 to play here in the first quarter. You know, punting, I get it. Uh, wet football. They thought maybe they could pick it up, but they didn't. They come out with a pistol back behind sophomore quarterback and they give on a jet to the left to the wing back Walensky and Walensky 10 12 breaks three tackles inside the 20 he's going to be finally forced out of bounds by Jackson Arone and Ward right out of the gate you can bet you know well that's part of their offense anyway with this wing T but uh, they picked on uh, Homer City's vulnerability and they picked up some big yardage yeah the end play has been poor all year long and once again it showed itself right there here, here comes again. Walensky again to the short side makes a cut 10 five going to be tackled uh, not at the five inside the 10 at about the eight yard line Riley Kobaugh who gets his first start of his career tonight at the free safety position but nine yards on that carry let's see where they put the football down so they picked up 26 yards Walensky got to get some penetration to slow that down or they're going to have a long night second and one there's a flag they give to Walensky knife's inside five fumbled the football Homer Center has it Riley Kobaugh with the hit and Ocean Maritita comes up with the ball let's see if they roll him down they're going to say Homer Center football I believe here Ward haven't seen a signal yet. I'm watching. Well, maybe not. There's all the flag either way. is going to back this play up. The officials, illegal motion on Portage. So and evidently not, they no ruled fumble. him down, no fumble. But the penalty wipes out what would have been a first and goal at about the two-yard line. So they back it up to the 13, and that should make it second down and six. Not a big help. That fumble would have been much better. <laughs> yeah, you're a Homer Center fan for sure. <laughs> they got to change up their line now. They got to get some more people in there, have more block than they have blockers. Let's see if they can get penetration. Owen Gauss, receiver to the right. Nesbella, the fullback. Smithrow, who has been hurt, is in there. And uh, Nesbella not going very far, thanks to Eli Butterly, the uh, defensive end, 5'10, 238 pound junior, who dropped him. And uh, they're going to give him a yard to the 12-yard line. Also crediting Garrett Green on that tackle. That's what you do there. you got to stop that inside play first, and then your ends have to really control the sweeps. They've got to turn them in. Hasn't happened yet. Sec or third down at about five to go, 8.50 moving clock here, scoreless first quarter, but the Mustangs are threatening. They're in the Citizens Ambulance red zone. Community support makes it work. Membership drive about to get underway. Trips to the right. Now they put Smithrow in motion. 
And they weren't sure if he was going to play. There's that inside reverse. They give it to Wilinski up the center of the field into the end zone for a touchdown from 12 yards out. Homer Center's defense did not stay home at all. And Smithrow scores from 12 yards out. Or Wilinski, that was, on that reverse. His eighth touchdown of the season. And Portage takes advantage of the short field. They lead 6 to nothing at the 8-28 mark. Yeah, there's two blockers going through the hole. He didn't need to. Big hole opened up. He was barely touched. They got to shore that up. Long snapper is Brock Miko. Holder Owen Gauss, the place kicker, Easton Slonick. He's 8 for 10 in PATs. And execution all the way around is uh, not good because the kick is no good. Plenty of height, but he missed it. Off to the right, I believe. So the teams come up field. Portage grabs the early lead, six to nothing. They lead Homer Center on the IRMC WCCS Football Network. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall is located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, featuring everything you need to make your next event shine. Inside the club, you can find members unwinding in the spacious bar and game room, enjoying great food, and just gathering with each other, watching their favorite team. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club in Twin Cities Event Hall, voted best in Indiana County 2023. Every moment. Off is Bodie Leo, and Bodie's kick lands behind Isaiah McCracken, picked up at the 21 yard line. And running with that football is Braden Dunn ever so gingerly with these soggy conditions, and he gets up to the 34-yard line. We're on the kick coverage team. It was Connor Bonneau for the second time in as many trips on the kick team. I want to extend my condolences to the family of Ron Jones, classmate of mine, class of 78, good friend. We lost him way too young. And uh, Poopsy, as he was known, was a key member of Ron Coleman's 1977 undefeated Wildcats who won the Appalachian Bowl, defeating Shade. Poops led the team in receiving in 77. He didn't carry the ball back then. Coach Coleman, didn't. they didn't have jet sweeps. The only jets were on runways at airports. We'll get back to yeah, this he, sad story. First and 10, and it's Brand, uh, Landon Hill, and he's hitting his own backfield by Walensky. Breaks one tackle, but he's still going to fight to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. It was Noah Walensky on the stop. You know, uh, Coach Coleman actually was at the funeral mass today, very emotional as, as many of us were. You know, Poopsie wasn't too bad on the hardwoods and baseball diamond either, Ward. He uh, liked to play a game or two of cards and just a, a great guy. Did a lot of fishing with Coach Coleman. You told me that. There's a fly pattern uh, to Will Jones at the 35-yard line of Portage, and it's broken up at the last minute by Gavin Bobolski, the cornerback on the far side. Yeah, you know, he, was there. He, yeah, it was just a little bit more distance, and it might have been six points. Yep. You know, Ron just had an unassuming, calming way, if you will, of navigating life, even during some difficult times here at the end. So sympathy wishes to Monica, 42 years they were married. Children Matthew and Lindsay and all of the extended family. Poopsie, Puts, we lost you way too young, but you'll live in, on, live in the hearts with a lot of love of everybody that did love you for years to come. Forever a fan, rest in peace, my friend. Give, and uh, who had that football? It was, that was uh, Braden. Braden ran it on the uh, keep. And tackled uh, short of the sticks by Isaac Wilinski. Whoops, he's always had a smile on his face, always looking for a little joke. And a terrific receiver, though. He called himself the amazing Ron Jones, and he certainly was. The freshman punter, good punt by Frazier, 
and Portage allows it to bounce and it takes a favorable bounce and gonna land uh, down at about the 16 yard line. That's a punt of 42 yards and no return. The receiver on that punt looked at the sidelines and said, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm thinking, you raise your hand and get a fair catch. You don't let it roll another 20 yards. That's the thing about returning punts. You gotta know what you're doing back there. Well, Homer needs to force something here, maybe on the ground, get the ball back and see if they can get something going offensively. So they start at their own 16 yard line. Portage offense averaging 20.7 points per game. And the give coming around the left side is Walensky. Ocean Maritita had him lined up, but he got past Ocean as we lean out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth window. And it was Isaiah McCracken and Riley Kobaugh coming up to finally drop him, but he does pick up positive yardage up near the 20 yard line. S&T Bank, people forward banking. Ward does so much sad news, I want to extend sympathy wishes to the Ed Gadosh family. Oh, Ed yes. passed away. Of course, uh, Mike Gadosh and uh, Shelly. Shelly. Uh, and, uh, know them Pat. well. Patty, his wife. And get well wishes again to Jimmy Sutter. And also one of the Wildcat all-time greats, Steve Wasik's been uh, battling illness. And we wish Steve the best. Yeah, I hope he the best. bounce back. Here's... Uh, the quarterback keeping the football, that is Easton Slonick, the sophomore. He's over the 20 to about the 22, but he's gonna be stopped shy of that lead chain on the tackle Jackson Arun of the Homer Center Wildcats. It's a big stop here for Homer. He could get three and out and maybe get the ball back in good field position. But you got to stop this play and I got a suspicion it's going wide. It's third down and four. 6-0 Portage, five and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. They reposition Bodie, tight end left. Smith row in motion, there's that reverse again. They hand it to Walensky, makes a cut in these soggy conditions, trying to get to that lead uh, chain, and he's very darn close, and he may have enough, he does, for a first down for the Portage Mustangs. On the stop, C Caleb Palmer of the Homer Center Wildcats along with Jackson Arone. Uh, Defensed a little better, but not good enough. Yeah, Mark, another first down. You, you know, you got to stop them while they're here, force them to kick from here. Anything can happen on a punt, but you got to stop them first. And, and Cats did a better job on that. Let's see if they can get some penetration and, and force a loss here. From the 27 of Portage. Slonick hands it off to the fullback, this Bella. Big gaping hole off the left side. He's going to rip off about 11 yards from the 27 to the 38 on the tackle, Jackson Arone. The good news is Jackson's been in on a lot of tackles. The bad news is you don't want those secondary guys making a lot of them. No huddle here. And Slonick keeps the football, and the Wildcats defense that. A lot better, but he does get on second effort over the 40-yard line up near the 42. So a gain of three or four, Landon Hill and Riley Kobaugh. Boy, Kobaugh, the sophomore who's earning his first start tonight, 5'9", 144, has come out strong. Yes, he has. He's making big tackles. Good athlete. His younger brother, Gabe, on the junior high team, an excellent athlete, but... Baby brother Colson said he's the best of them all. He's an <laughs> elementary school. Second down, six, and they give on that reverse again. It's Smith Rowe this time, near side to midfield. He has running room down the left sideline of the 40 to the 35, 30, 25, 20. Giving chase from behind his Kobaugh, tries stripping the ball, but he's into the end zone for a touchdown, but hold on, stop the press. There's flags back upfield, and this one likely is coming back. That call, it looks like the preliminary call was a hold. 58-yard touchdown run looks like it's going to be negated. We're going to step out briefly as they sort this out with 3.50 to play in the first quarter. Portage 6, Homer Center nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. 
Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. is proud to support our hometown teams in the 62nd District. As we come back, this fellow, the fullback with the carry, he's hit and hit hard by guess who, Ward, number 30, Riley Kobach. <laughs> gave, gave him a little shove after that, too, just to let him know he's out there. Good, solid stick. They need one more of those. Homer Port needs the ball back. I mentioned Portage's offense, 20.7 points per game, 165 yards rushing, 77 passing. Although they had a big week through the air against Purchase Line last week. 242 overall, 10th best in the conference. And we have a timeout called by Homer Center. With 3.15 left in the first quarter, Portage second and six when we return, leading six to nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd's? The timeout, third down and six to go. And they give on that reverse again, but Landon Hill has wants nothing to do with it, and he drops Brendan Smithrow for a loss back to the 36-yard line. Now, was that second or third down? Scoreboard said it second. Third down. Now it is going to be fourth. Yep. Great job by Landon. Uh, Homer finally adjusted to that. And that's all you got to do is just kind of stay home and wait for the runner to come to you. And that's what Landon did. Now, here's an opportunity maybe. Get in there, make a block. And by punting the way, is, the rain has stopped. Mark. Punting is Bodie Leo. 10 punts, 35.2 average. Back deep for Homer Center. Braden Dunn. And the kick is away. And... Braden takes it at the 25-yard line, and he's going to go down right there. We have immediate timeout with 2.26 left here in the first quarter. It's the Portage Mustang 6 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Raced in Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in a club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. Yeah! Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. Want to send out Braden Dunn, who just caught that uh, 
punt and is the quarterback and an outstanding multi-sport athlete at Homer Center. Braden's grandfather, Bill Wenzel, is watching tonight's game at IRMC where he's been recovering. And Bill, we're wishing you the best. Of course, father of Braden's mom, Krista. Bill's been at IRMC. He watched last week's game too, Ward. So hopefully the Wildcats can make something positive happen. And the first play's positive out over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Let's see who had that football that for the like Homer Land Center Wilds. Yeah, yeah, it is Landon Hill. Bill Wenzel was a doggone good pitcher in his day at the high school. Lamar Lamar. Oh, actually, no. He, well, he's from Shalokta, maybe back in the day. I he, don't know. No, he played for the high school, yeah. And he played at county ball, too. He was, he was a good ball player. All right. Well... Bill, I'm going to give you some advice, too, after this game, is the give is to Landon, and he barrels up the middle, hard-nosed, running for a first down over the 35 to about the 37 or 38-yard line. Let's see for the Portage Mustang, who is getting up off the bottom of that train wreck, and that is Easton Swanick. I mentioned Bill got to take it easy because, you know, if Braden takes off for a long touchdown run, we don't want the <laughs> nurses want running in the – the uh, monitors making loud noises and beeping at IRMC. So, Bill, just relax, enjoy the game, and let's see if the Wildcats and uh, your grandson, Braden Dunn, can deliver here tonight with a new set of downs at the 37-yard line. And they give to Landon again. I mentioned 12 carries to reach 500 in his career. Jerry, how many so far? That is carry number five. And he has just moved up the rushing list for Homer Center. Nick Somerville on the tackle, the six foot, 220 pound senior defensive tackle, made the stop. A gain of three for Landon. Ward, I know somewhere, did uh, did you take it back off of me? I gave you the all time uh, yeah, rushes. I Maybe I, you have it handy I'll there? I'll have to get it out of here. Because Braden is close to moving past Mike Newhouse. Second down from the 40 and seven to go. Straight eye formation. How about that? My eyes didn't deceive me. And it's Hill into the secondary to midfield down to the 46-yard line before Easton Slonick, the free safety, tackled him. They ran that a couple times, Mark. It did kind of slipped by me, too. But uh, they've been running eye formation. Look at the difference. The lead blocker is giving Landon Hill some space, and he's taking full advantage of it. 25 seconds left here in the quarter. 6-0 Portage. Wildcats don't have to run a play, but it appears that they will with a fresh set of downs. Wide side of the field if you're watching toward the Portage bench and our S&T Bank broadcast booth side. Give to Landon again. Landon breaks a tackle. They finally have him by the jersey and rip him down, but not before he gains about nine more. And the first quarter is going to come to a close as Logan Grove Save that from being much more, and the quarter is over, but the Wildcats have found something positive going here, and they will take that momentum into the second quarter, but they trail after one, Portage 6, and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Looking to experience luxury with your next vehicle? Then look no further than Luther Lincoln. From the full-size Lincoln Navigator to the mid-size Lincoln Aviator or the Lincoln Nautilus and Corsair crossovers, Luther has the Lincoln you want. With complimentary pickup and delivery for service or being able to schedule your service appointments online, Luther Lincoln wants to make your experience a pleasant one. Luther Lincoln, your choice for Lincoln. Route 119, Homer City. Click on LutherLincoln.net. Hello, this is Jay and Shannon from Hutton Blues Insurance. We pride ourselves on building strong personal relationships with our clients. We are an independent agency offering you the best coverage at the best rate. When you buy insurance, whether it's for your home, car, business, or life, you want an advocate working in your best interests. And that's Hutton Blues Insurance. Route 119 North, just outside of Indiana. We're also honored to have been voted in the top two insurance companies in the 2324 Best of Indiana County Contest. Thank, Thank you, Indiana, Indiana County. County. football on WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM, your home for the Wildcats. Landon Hill to open up the second quarter has a first down and more. He only needed a yard and he got about seven on his eighth carry of the football game. On the tackle, Jacob Nolan. Landon now eight carries for about 50 yards. 
The, do my Four. eyes deceive me? Or is that not an eye formation that you and I have been baking? It well, that's what I said earlier, heart. yes. We're going to update something on Landon as he moved past Mike Newhouse. Eye formation with Braden Dunn under center, double tights, and the give to Hill. And Hill fights for yardage. He's so big and strong, six foot one, two oh nine, and plays bigger than that. And right now, Portage has their hands full with Mr. Dunn or uh, Mr. Hill, Logan Grove on that tackle along with Isaac Walensky. Walensky leads the team, the Mustangs, with 48 tackles entering uh, action tonight. Credit to McCracken on these blocks. I've been watching. He is sealing people off, and that's opening up hills. Tight end right, Caleb Palmer. We'll see the tight end to the left here if we can. It's Jackson Arone, the give to Hill. little jump cut at the line at scrimmage. Spins inside to 25, but really two yards from one side of the 25 to the other goes Hill on the stop. Logan Grove once again the defensive end so it'll set up third down and about five opening two minutes of the second quarter. A drive that started in the first after a punt at the 25 yard line. This sets up some of those short passes we've been uh, asking that they throw a little more of. And they do go back to shotgun formation. H back left McCracken. Tight end left is Jackson Arone. Only one receiver split out. That is Jones, but they give it to Hill, and Hill runs into a green jersey. He's going to lose a yard back to the 25-yard line. Somebody didn't get a block on the free safety, Easton Slonick, who came up to make that tackle. The I formation's a tight formation. They run the spread. It's spread out a little more. That allows the defense to get wide. That's what happened there. He shed a block and came in and hit Landon. They didn't have a chance. By the way, Landon Hill, 2,474 yards now in his career move pass. Mike Newhouse into fifth place on the all-time list. Pete Kuda is next at number four. Of course, Ben Schmidt, the all-time rushing leader at Homer Center in their history. There's a hold on Homer Center, and Dunn's coming near side, and he's knifed down at the 25-yard line, and the Mustangs will decline that and take over on Downs, Wart. Yeah, unfortunate. So give Portage his defense credit. They stiffen when they had to. And here, I, w I didn't look at the replay monitor in time, but trust me, it was a oh, big-time hold. It was a hold. <laughs> Whoever it was over there threw their arms out and said, no, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> so Portage will take over at the 25. So the Wildcats navigate 50 yards of soggy turf, but they stall. And they might have run a pass off of the eye. Uh, you had them tight in and had them biting pretty hard on those play flakes if you ran one like that. And they, they might have had more successful little out pattern. But that's the way it went. So Portage starts at their own 25-yard line near side hash as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth window. And running through two tackles, the Portage Mustangs with the football is Bono And Brady Frazier, the freshman, has them. And uh, he does get about five yards. Portage does a nice job of running this offense. It's pretty impressive, very efficient. Homer has to do a better job of tackling, though. Yep, he Giving ran up through. five yards there on a play that was pretty much stopped. Wing left and right. And it's Walensky in motion, but they give up the middle. And with the footballs, 24 been out again. And I'm going to check something on Jim McLaughlin. I, want, I wanted to ask about his pronunciation, and we're going to get it right now. It is Bino, so I wasn't that far off. Like Bino Cookward, if you're old enough to remember Bino. If I'm old enough. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and inches, quarterback keeper, and Slonick keeps the legs moving and almost picks up five yards up to about the 39-yard line. On the stop, it was Riley Kobaugh again. Holy moly, Riley has come to play. He got inserted as a starter, and I think he's making a case. He's basically saying, don't take me out. He's playing with a lot of enthusiasm, and that's so encouraging to see that from a player on the defensive side. Yeah, I was born on leap year, so maybe that's the reason I'm so young. But Yeah, that's true. You look great. 
We <laughs> talk about a lot of things, including hair, coming over on our trips, don't we? And I still have it. <laughs> and they give to Walensky, oh. trying to turn the corner. He gets by Hill. Flag flies. That's going to come back. He picks up yardage to the 43-yard line. But I think there's a reason Landon Hill missed that tackle. Will we get a replay on that, John? Yeah, here we go right here. And, yeah, I think uh, this Bella was guilty, and he gave the old shrug. What, me? And it is holding on Portage, and they will back them up. Pretty much tackled Landon, who was trying to tackle their runner. This Wildcat defense, as beleaguered as it's been, has gotten a little bit late, uh, better the last two weeks, but they average allowing 33.5 points per game, 264 yards rushing, 74 passing, 338 per game. They actually dropped one spot uh, to 11th overall. Boy, there's some big games tonight, by the way. <laughs> United Valley at Portage off to check the out-of-town scoreboard. Cambry Heights at West Shimokin. Northern Cambria at River Valley. And the gift to Bino, and Bino trying to get to the right corner, and he pounds his hand on the turf, and he's mad he didn't get to the edge, but Will Jones did a good job defending it, and the Mustangs yeah, Riley, pick up a couple to the 31. Riley Coleball came up real quick and hit him and almost had him, and that allowed Will Jones to come up and finish him off. So it was a nice combo on that effort. United Valley leading Portage at the end of one, 12 to nothing. West Shimokin seven, Cambria Heights nothing, end of one. Oh. Penn's Manor, Marion Center, scoreless end of one. Penn's Manor shut out back-to-back -back games. Yeah, they're struggling offensively. Northern Cambria seven. Is there a fumble? Homer Center, I think, has the football. I was looking at the scoreboard. Northern Cambria leading River Valley seven to nothing, and the Wildcats have it. I'm not sure who came yeah, up with Caleb that fumble. Palmer. Palmer came up with it? Yep. So the Wildcats get the football Replay with 641. Mark. We'll look at our screen. The handoff, just the exchange yeah, wasn't clean it. with the fullback, Nisbella, and it uh, popped onto the turf, and Palmer said, thank you very much. Now, the old Jerry Page would uh, do a little belly fake and yes, have a tight end is. streaking down the field wide open. Boy, wouldn't he. That <laughs> let's, is, let's see what his dad That is does. spot on, Wart. Anytime they had a turnover in the enemy territory, he would run that play, and boy, he cannot stop it. They go from the shotgun, almost a pistol back, and they throw it out in the flat, and Danny Jones takes it and keeps his footing inside the 25, down to about the 24 or the 23. That uh, Nesbella made that tackle for the Portage Mustangs. Nesbella defensively, a linebacker on the outside, third on the team with 28 tackles. This Portage defense allowing 25.8 points per game, 235 yards rushing, 55 passing, 290 overall, which is seventh out of the 12, team, uh, 12 teams in the conference. Second down and about three to go. They have motion, and they give to the motion man. And uh, is that Riley Kobach? I think it might be who is in there on offense and maybe showing his inexperience there, Ward, as he just didn't come with enough speed. And Noah Walensky a little hesitation made that tackle. There. I would have liked to have seen him going back to that eye formation. That Portage has shown no ability to stop it, and uh, Homer got out of it. And uh, now they're starting to struggle again. Now, now they got McCracken back in the game. We'll see what they do. Now they had second and three, and they ran a play with a young player in a tough spot there, and uh, they lose yardage. So it's now third down and seven from the Portage 27-yard line. Double H back to the left, Palmer and Isaiah McCracken. And the quarterback, Braden Dunn, going to run play action. Dumps it off underneath to Palmer. Palmer drags the defender inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Across the way, not sure who made that stop for Portage. By the rain has stopped, right? right? Here's the play. Oh, here we go, Nesbella and also Owen Gauss, as we see it on our replay monitor, courtesy of our digital producer, John Smathers. Good Boy, it's nice player. having that big monitor. Yeah. John, we wouldn't mind uh, maybe a 72-inch screen next week. <laughs> Fourth down and four, and Dunn looking to pass. Throws, Will Jones takes it and drops the football. I guess he didn't take it. He was running. Looking to where he needed to get before he hauled it in and dropped it, and we will have a media timeout. Unfortunate for Homer Center. Good execution, except 
for the catch, and Will would be the first one to tell you. Six to nothing, Portage, 436 remaining in the half on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Hi, it's Brian from SeaWorld Satellites, your Dish Premier local retailer. Upgrade to Dish from DirecTV and get a $300 prepaid MasterCard. Just mention offer code DTV2DISH. Come in or call us today at 724-463-3200, extension 122, to learn more and make the switch to Dish. That's 724-463-3200, extension 122. Offer ends 11 23 Eligibility requirements and restrictions apply. Call for full details. Takes over after allowing six net yards, actually seven, but the Wildcats lost uh, yardage two. And the give to the fullback Nespella over the 30 up to the 31 yard line. Where was that Riley Cobaw again? It was. <laughs> I'm telling you, Riley has been in the on about eight or nine tackles already. He's a free safety, though, and that's the problem. That's five yards downfield or more. Second down, three to go. And Nisbella again, double teamed. He's converged on by Landon Hill and also 55, Caden McAnally, the freshman. So third down and about three to go. Every week, Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana. They're helping us to help the kids through Renda Media's 45th annual Teddy Bear Fun Drive. They donate a point for every point scored across our four Indiana County Radio Network games, including the four tonight. Through the first six weeks, they have donated $1,059 to the Teddy Bear Fun Drive. Renda Media says thank you, Grand Beginnings Children's Center, for helping us to help the kids. Third down and three, and Slonic play action pass, throwing deep. And it's intercepted, oh, it's almost intercepted by Will Jones. Will bangs wow. his hands on his helmet. He said, I did it on offense, now I did it on defense. It's not like Will Jones. No, it isn't. That's, that's, that's probably the most drops we'll see from him all season long. Wow, Just, that was right there. He there, played it right. It looked like a timing pattern, a comeback pattern that was intended for Owen Gauss, but uh, Will Jones was... You know, he was out right here, and you can see where he's at, and he was watching the sideline when the uh, quarterback was getting the play. Just to alert Michael Burdick and John Smathers after the punt will break for a quick 30. Bodie Leo to punt, Braden Dunn to receive, stands at his own 35. Long snappers, Brock Miko. You may remember his brother is a pretty good player last year. Line drive kick, gonna back Dunn up, takes it at the 26 yard line. Has some running room to the 30, 35, 40. Makes a move at the 45, 50, where he has stood up and hit and dropped. But the Wildcats will start in Portage up, uh, field position, 43-yard punt, and a good return by Braden Dunn. Tackle made by Trent Nesbella. 6-0 Portage, 3.23 remaining. Wildcat ball when we continue on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Hi, my name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for six area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com. Equal opportunity employer. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes. The field, and they end up backing Homer Center up to the 25 yard line. So, Wildcats have 75 yards of real estate to navigate, and they give to Landon Hill, and they stack that up as another flag comes in. Maybe did they reach for a face mask there? 
We'll see what this penalty is about. On the tackle, it was Nick Somerville who's been in on a host of tackles, and uh, we have a player getting up slowly, it appears, for the Mustangs. That's and Somerville. That is Somerville. That was like Landon's 12th carry. That was Landon Hill's 12th carry. Our spotter, good, Jim McLaughlin, telling me in my ear that that's his. That was a face mask. That is his 500th carry ward in his oh, career. That's a, that's a ton of totes. <laughs> He entered the game 488 rushes for 2,425 yards. You know, here's the thing. It tells the tale of an inexperienced offensive line. In his freshman year in 2020, the COVID year, he was injured, did not play, injured in preseason. His sophomore year, he carried 153 for 853, a 5.6 average. And that was with an experience line. I'll get back to my point. First down after that face mask penalty from the 40. And there's carry number 13. And the Mustangs limit him to one yard up to about the 41-yard line. And my favorite name in the entire Heritage Conference, Fence Rocker, made that tackle <laughs> for <laughs> the Mustangs, a sophomore 5'10", 320. So, as a junior then last year, 220 carries for 1,120 yards, a 5.1 average. So not bad, 5.6. It did drop to 5.1. This year entering the game, 115 carries, 452 yards, a 3.9 average. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely shows. And <laughs> last year I would attribute some of that. He just played so nicked up and just yeah, he was battled bad through the last season. Year. 2.15 to play here in the half, clock running. Second down and eight for Homer Center. Motion man is Dan Jones, but Braden on the read option is gonna keep it, and Portage stays home, and they stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Good defense by the Mustangs. On that stop was Logan Grove again, and the Wildcats faced with third down and about eight to go from their own 42-yard line. I don't know if they have a short pass off of that play or not, because I don't know what Braden saw. There was no place to go there. And if he could have just pulled up and made a little pop pass, maybe five yards, could have turned into something. 100 seconds remaining in this first half of action. Our ITT halftime show will have radio replays, or as is the case right now, replay on Portage's only score. And the Wildcats are going to let the clock run down to the one second mark and take a timeout. With 124 remaining in the first half, score continues to be Portage Mustang six and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. You're listening and watching on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Kip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's jeweler. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Built in the 1930s, third down and eight for Homer Center. Twin receivers left and right for the Cats. Braden Dunn out of the shotgun, takes the snap from Zach Wilson. Throws underneath, and it's through the hands of the intended receiver. And is that Dan or Will? That's Dan Jones, Will's twin brother. And now the Wildcats will have to send out the punt team, Ward Hilliard, with 80 seconds left here in this first half. Well, they've had opportunities, not so much this time with third and eight, but, uh, oh. Got to catch the football Good there. Dropping passes, which we typically don't do. They're there. They're open, and you got to come back to that stuff. Now, dangerous with the wet football, even though the rain has subsided. It's still slippery. Danny Jones, normally reliable, and he does send a good snap back to freshman punter Brady Frazier, who gets off another kick and a fair catch called for by Gauss of the Portage Mustangs, and they will take over with 116 remaining, a 29-yard punt 
by the freshman who continues to impress. Fans, a lot can happen to kids after hours and not just on the gridiron. Babies get fevers, children step on glass, athletes twist their ankles. If your child or teen needs care and your doctor's office is closed, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is there for you seven days a week, eight till eight. Since 2009, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge voted best urgent care and walk-in clinic in the best of Indiana County contest. So this contest shows Portage leading six to nothing and they will take over at their own 29 yard line with 116 remaining here in the first half and the Wildcats at this point Ward you just want to get off the field down by just six. You're absolutely right and they will have to kick off so you need to stop Portage here. And Slonick looking to pass and off of the outstretched left fingertips of Bodie Leo, his tight end and receiver, and it'll be second and ten. Timeout situation. Wildcats have one remaining. Portage has all three. As I said, Leo, excellent basketball player. You saw a little of that skill right there. He's able to get across the field the way he did and almost made that catch. Aren't you going to sing Oleo? Oh, no. That's no, another no, song. I'm, I'm not going to. Hey, by the way, I presented Coach Page at our interview media scrum yesterday. You know, Greg Brown's one of his favorite announcers, and I brought him a one of those Hawaiian shirts that they give away. Oh. And it was autographed by Brownie. Boy, he was thrilled. He That's put it on, <laughs> and they hand it off to Nesbella, and tackling him from behind Landon Hill. And uh, Nesbella picks up about five yards, and then the football parents feed the team and the coaches. It's a tradition every Thursday. And Coach left our media scrum and walked into the cafeteria with that bright gold shirt on with all of those <laughs> logos on it. He got a round of applause. I don't. I thought maybe he'd wear it on the sideline tonight, but he does not have it on. Timeout called by Portage with 51 seconds left here in the first half. It's Portage 6 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. You're listening and watching on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your local Erie agent is William G. Meckling Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 724-465-4261 or visit mecklinginsurance.com. Very rate lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Five yard line. He was finally stopped by Jackson Arone, but uh, we may have this one coming back too with 44.4 seconds remaining here in the first half. And the Wildcats still a chance if this penalty is on Portage to get the ball back. Let's see if we detect anything here. It's behind the play and away from the I'm play. I'm looking at so the you monitor think it would be there. A hold. And I didn't see it, anything, but their personal foul, it's on hit to the, hit to the, the head, head on Portage. It's been on the block, which we didn't see here. Do you have another replay of that, John, or no? We see here, here's the play in our replay monitor in our S&T Bank broadcast booth. And, uh, hmm. I didn't see anything. Didn't see anything obvious. But instead of a first down, the Wildcats have them back at the 20 yard line where it's third down and 19 to go. They restart the clock. And if I'm Homer Center, I'm taking it. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They could run the ball and it would be the same result. Yeah. They're not going to be any in any hurry. Just don't let anybody behind you. The Wildcats have been susceptible to deep passes. And Slonick is wisely looking at the play clock in the far end zone, which is down to five seconds. And they snap it, and they hand it off. And Bino, I think that is, with the football, and he's going to be dragged down from behind by Homer Center's Josh Volucic. 
and they do stop the clock with 14 seconds left. Homer Center burns their final timeout. 14 seconds left in the half. It's Portage 6 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. Coming back to Portage Stadium after this on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. And all season long, presented by Luxembourg's Jewelry in the Indiana Mall in downtown Indiana. Boy, they've been in that historic building for so many years, serving Indiana and surrounding areas since 1916. And WA, not too early to start thinking about getting Bernie one of those big rocks that you like to get her every Christmas. Yeah, we got a whole bunch out in New York here. <laughs> I'm That's talking where I got our Luxembourg. We got our yeah, engagement, our, her engagement ring there. Well, you have good very memory. Happy well, you have a very it. good memory to think oh, all yes. those years back. <laughs> Punting is Bodie Leo at the 15-yard line. Snap is good, and the kick line drive spinning kind of crazily, and the Wildcats will let it roll as the clock rolls with the football, and the clock is down to 3.7 seconds left, and the football's touch dead at about the 20-yard line where Homer Center will take over a 54-yard punt. Good job by Leo. And, uh, I think equally good job by, no, if by more, Dunn, if, but not to try to pick that If up. Coach Page would have deferred, they'd be getting the ball back. Yes, yeah, well. But, and that's the first time. Now, although I agree taking the football because the defense has not exactly well, been whole, a tone that, setter. That whole early sequence is the only go score in this ball game. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, the Wildcats will take a knee and head to the locker room here at Portage Stadium. And I think they have makeshift locker rooms because of the the part of the $1.25 million renovations that are going on here. And Braden does take a knee, and that's the end of the first half. So, it looked like things were going to get away from Homer Center early, and then they had a chance to maybe tie this thing up or take the lead, but a couple of opportunities uh, got away from them. But as it is, not too bad. We have a very competitive game, week number seven, between these two long-time uh, successful programs. But Portage with the upper hand for now as we reach the break. In our ITT halftime show, it's Portage 6 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. You're listening and watching on Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and our radio broadcast across the Indiana County Radio Network, presented by IRMC. Better health, better life. Coming back to kick off our ITT halftime show in the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122, or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. So what sets s and apart from other financial institutions is that they are visionary. Now, we understand that it is partially about the numbers, but they know it's not just about the numbers. It's about the management team, it's about the strategic and business plan, it's about how the team is going to execute on that. In short, s and gets it. Quite honestly, we couldn't have done it without s and Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd's? 
Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, drive off in a new F-Series truck, Ford Ranger, Ford Maverick, or the all-electric F-150 Lightning. Check out the Ford Bronco, Bronco Sport, Eco Sport, Escape, Explorer, Expedition, Edge, and Mustang Mach-E. And always look at the exciting Ford Mustang. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations, Route 119 Homer City and Admiral Perry Highway, Evansburg. LutherFord.com. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. Portage Stadium. This stadium, as I've mentioned, built in the <coughs> 1930s and uh, about a mile or so from the school. I understand just a, a few minute drive. Um, it was built in the 30s as part of the Works Progressive Administration, an employment and infrastructure program to provide work during the Great Depression. Needless to say, it was built for a lot less than a million dollars, but this venue is about to undergo that million dollar makeover. The first phase is the bleachers and support beams and concrete to be redone at a cost of $415,000. And then the EADS group of Altoona Johnstown was approved at a cost of $105,000 to design a new modern state-of-the-art multi-purpose locker room building that will be housed between the football and baseball stadiums and the facility is expected to cost upwards of $700,000 alone. So um, yeah, this place, Ward, how about that? Built in the 30s as part of the Works Progressive Administration, an employment and infrastructure program to provide work during the Great Depression. There you go, Michael, that might be your answer next year, the way our economy is going. If there's a depression, you just get work done at Memorial Field, and before you know it, when we come out of it, uh, you'll have a new facility. WPA, I think that's a Work Progress Association, but I could be wrong on that. But they remember the real fact right. that uh, curve out and cherry run there. That mm -hmm. was all done by those people. Hey, before we get to our radio replays, some business to take care of. First of all, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. We couldn't do what we do on the video side, and John Smathers working his magic without the presenting sponsorship of the fine folks at the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. We had some of their great pizza last week at our little get-together that we do, and it was delicious. We had both the thin and the thicker crust, and tonight they're featuring, once again, the Wildcat Special. $10 for a large pizza one topping and you can get additional co toppings for only one dollar each public welcome down at the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club Pizza served until 11 you can order in advance by calling 724-479-3985 if you're watching tonight's video stream you see that scrolling at the bottom of the screen and to Red and Tony Della Fiora, Sticky Lawson and all the crew the board members the officers boy do we say a big thank you you yeah. know Ward we we talked earlier about some folks that have been uh, under the weather, and of course we lost Ron Jones and the funeral was today, but you know, the people, some of the people that I mentioned tonight are watching the game, and without the Sportsman's Club, that wouldn't be possible. And it's a wonderful service, and I always say that it's uh, wonderful, particularly for those who can't get out and get to games any longer. Jimmy Sutter, I know unable to watch tonight, as he recovers at Indian Haven, but he is listening. So that makes, that warms my heart more than anything else. Well, I know many times people have come up to me and said, yeah, we were watching you on TV, and boy, that's a nice feature to have. You can sit in your home, you don't have to come out in the elements, especially a little bit of a rainy night like tonight. Uh, that's just a great service. Thank you, Coral Grayston, very much. Speaking of service, the Altman Volunteer Fire Department, like all of our emergency responders around the county do a great job 
Wildcats are hoping to cash in with some points in the second half. But you can always cash in at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department at Bingo every Thursday at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department. Doors open at 5. Games start at 6.30. Progressive payouts increase by $10 for every 10 players after 60. So come out every Thursday night at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department for Bingo. Brenda salutes all of the emergency responders and the many volunteers involved at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department on 58 7th Street in Altman, just off of Route 286. And WA, I'm not saying that bingo is exclusively for seniors, but um, you do, you would fit in nicely. I no, you can't keep, keep up? up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Under the B. Hey, let's get to our radio replays, and this won't take long. The Wildcats uh, won the toss and received the football. They ran four plays, eight yards, starting at their own 29-yard line, but turned it over on downs. Decision, we can ask Greg Page on the post game. Does he regret it or not? He went for it on fourth down, came up short, and ended up setting up Portage. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that'll be a coach's And they weren't decision. sure if he was going to play. There's that inside reverse. They give it to Wilinski up. So Portage took over at the 37-yard line. My mistake, Michael, I think I teed that up for you. You're trying to play off of me, and I uh, threw you a curveball there. So after holding Homer Center, the Mustangs took over at the Wildcat 37. They got a 19-yard run by Walensky, followed by a 9-yard run by Walensky to Homer Center's 8-yard line. He picked up a total of 41 yards because there was a penalty that uh, backed them up. But they eventually worked it down, and uh, they were faced with a third down and five from the Wildcat 12-yard line. And they weren't sure if he was going to play. There's that inside reverse. They give it to Wilinski up the center of the field into the end zone for a touchdown from 12 yards out. Homer Center's defense did not stay home at all. And Smithrow scores from 12 yards out. Or Wilinski, that was, on that reverse. His eighth touchdown of the season. And Portage takes advantage of the short field. They lead 6 to nothing at the 8.28 mark. Easton Slonick's extra point sailed wide right, but four plays, 37 yards. The Mustangs on their first possession had a 6 to nothing lead. And really, the Wildcats had a couple of opportunities. They had a fumble recovery in the second quarter by Kayla Palmer. Started at the Portage 30, but it stalled at the Portage 24-yard line. And one other opportunity stalled at the Portage 25, where they moved at 50 yards but uh, bogged down, and that's where we're at. Six to nothing, Portage at the break. When our ITT halftime show continues, we will get to the stats that uh, shaped up the first half. We'll also check the out-of-town scoreboard and look ahead on uh, what's on tap next year or next week, I should say, on the Heritage Conference schedule. We'll do that when we return. I'm trying to buy time for John. He was grabbing a water. As we go to break, the Portage Band per, um, performing right now. They're going to eventually have Portage, Homer Center, and St. Francis musicians on the field. We'll see maybe if we can pick up a little bit of that when we return. Right now, 6 nothing Portage as our ITT halftime show continues on the IRNC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall is located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, featuring everything you need to make your next event shine. Inside the club, you can find members unwinding in the spacious bar and game room, enjoying great food, and just gathering with each other watching their favorite team. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall, voted best in Indiana County 2023. I'm Ocean Jet. We never drop the ball on the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore for your wall back insurance needs. 
Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallbeck Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallbeck Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbeckinsurance.com. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. And John coming out of the in our booths. More to come yet on our ITT halftime report. Wardy Hoyard, I have an important question to ask you. Yes. Have you ever seen John Smathers extended in a bucket truck over a street? Uh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't think I'd have too many occasions to see that. No. Well, you will tomorrow because after Coach's Corner at 10, John will be extended over Philadelphia Street in Is a bucket that truck. right? Yes, he will. Well, that's worth the price of admission, and that's absolutely free to watch it's that It's actually parade. free to watch that, and most bucket trucks do not tip over when the bucket <laughs> is extended over streets. Most, but not all. But we... <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be part of our homecoming stream coverage tomorrow. John came up with the idea, boy, if we got a bucket truck, we could really get a good shot of all of the pageantry and the uh, young students that are participating. So that'll be one of our camera shots. He will be in a bucket provided by our friends at Sheasley Electric. If everything goes as planned, you never know about weather and technology, but that's the plan. So you'll get to see him extended. Ooh, that'd that'd be be maybe the first and only time. Yeah, that particularly if it tips over. <laughs> okay. What about the stats? How to about shape the, up the stats? First half? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for Portage, uh, Beno had uh, four carries, 17 yards. Willings, uh, what is that? Willinsky. Willinsky. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm having trouble reading here. We don't have much light. Uh, he had six carries, 50 yards. Despella had uh, six carries, 27. Slonic, three carries, 16, and one carry for Smith throw. He had two, two carries, I'm sorry, for one yard. He left the game after that. He was injured, and I haven't seen him back. I saw him on the sidelines limping around, so he may not return. 21 rushes, 11, 111 yards, and a touchdown. Slonico of two through the air, so they had 111 total yards, no passing for Portage. Homer's D done a lot better. Uh, 30 for the Wildcats. Uh, Landon Hill, 13 carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Oh, no, no touchdown. I saw Jerry circled that 12. I wondered what that was. Raiden Dunn had six carries for 14. Uh, I'm Cobol. trying to. Colbaugh had one carry minus four. So Homer had 20 carries, 64 yards. Dunn was two of five through the air for 10. Homer had 64 on the ground and 10 through the year, they had a total of 74 yards in the first half. A little better, but I think they just stuck with that I formation. Our viewers on Renda oh. Digital TV were seeing what it's like for you to do stats <laughs> in a dark press box with this device. I, see, I was I was being nice. I was helping. Yes, you, you were, and I appreciated that. It, it was hard to see this stuff. So there you have the first half well, stats presented on. by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Yes, combo band of Homer Center, Portage, and St. Francis University up the road in Loretto. Let's pick up a little bit.
job. Hey, we pulled in Ward. We heard that. They were rehearsing that, the three bands, and we thought, and that's, I guess, it for them. We thought, man, that Portage band can put out some <laughs> yeah. sound. And then we walked through the gate, and we saw that it was the three bands. And uh, their athletic director, Cece, had told me that was going to happen. Well done. Well, it was. By the Homer Center. I love Portage. watching these bands. You're going to see eight or nine of them tomorrow at the homecoming parade. By the way, our video stream coverage will begin around 10 o'clock, and we will have all of the pageantry of the homecoming parade on Renda Digital TV. Just any of our websites, John, have all of the websites have the link, including wccsradio.com. And uh, you could also search for the Renda YouTube channel. Are you going to throw candy? I am not going to throw candy. I don't know what my assignment is other than Andy Hart, John doesn't know this, gave me instructions that I can sleep in a little bit if I brought them sandwiches from McDonald's around <laughs> 9 o'clock. So I might take Andy up on that offer. So that's our ITT halftime report. We're going to come back. Actually, one more order of business before we go to break because this is a very important month. Uh, and we'll be involved with IRMC in a number of ways. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. IRMC's Comprehensive Breast Center provides you and your loved ones with comprehensive and compassionate care needed for total breast health. The team at IRMC are among the most experienced in the region. IRMC, in partnership with UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, is at the forefront of breast cancer diagnosis and cares for their patients every step of the way, from prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and recovery. Many area teams, including the Homer Center Wildcats, are sporting IRMC breast cancer awareness decals on their helmets during the month of October to show their support. The Wildcats were supposed to have them on their helmets tonight, I was told, and we'll see maybe if there's an opportunity in the Wildcat benches on the far side of the field, so I'm not sure if we could pick that up from this distance, and it's a little muddy track too, but uh, we'll see if they have those breast cancer awareness decals from IRMC as they participate in breast cancer awareness as we fight together another terrible disease that uh, we try to find answers for. When we come back, in addition to starting the second half, we'll give you the out-of-town scoreboard. The scoreboard right here says Portage Mustang 6, Homer Center Wildcats nothing, a battle of two and four teams. Winner will have an inside edge of maybe gaining a playoff spot uh, if they can finish in the top eight, work to do on both sidelines when we return on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At the Indiana Region. At Mark Arbuckle Nissan here in downtown Indiana, we sell more new Titans than any other dealer in our region of the country. That's because we have more Titans to choose from and we give great deals on new Titans every day. And there'll never be a better time to buy your new Titan truck than right now. And there's no better place to buy your new Titan truck than Mark Arbuckle Nissan. That's Mark Arbuckle Nissan, because if you buy a Nissan someplace else, you'll pay more money. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. Hi, my name is Zachary, and this is a bus that I take to school every day. It's this Miss Bus. We have a really fun bus driver. And guess what? Miss Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for six area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com. Equal opportunity employer. We'll give you the out-of-town scores. Ward, I'll give you the score. 
and you tell me your reaction. <laughs> okay. I like to play the word Hilliard game. Battle of winless teams. Connemaw Township 14, Connemaw Valley 6. Uh, not a surprise. Township a little more offense. What has happened to Penn's Manor's offense? It's now 10 straight quarters that have been blanked at least. Marion Center 6, Penn's Manor nothing. Marion Center certainly playing better, but the Comets offense, since they lost that running back, has just gone to, into the pits. West Shimokin 15, Cambria Heights 13. That running back, by the way, Carter Smith. That's right. I'm s sorry for skipping. <laughs> forgetting his name, but uh, I, I, that game was Shemokin uh, playing well. They seem to have some offense. Their defense is suspect. Uh, West Shemokin will be Homer Center's opponent next week out in New Mine. We will be there 6-15 airtime. Northern Cambria 13, River Valley 7. That's a surprise. River Valley has been steamrolling most people, but Cam Northern Cambria somehow, Coach Shooty gets people to plug in. He's lost some key people, and they're still winning ball games. That's a credit to that coaching staff. United Valley 26, purchase line nothing. That is a shock. That is a shock, although I will say purchase line has lost some people. They have uh, one guy that was out for the year, and he was a valuable player. And, again, the names escape me. I apologize. That's uh, uh, Chambers. Chambers, See, and, and they, I think they just lost the guy today. Todd Marino texted me, left tackle, middle linebacker Charles Edwards, the Heritage Conference's leading tackler. That's Blood the, clot in his calf, lost for the season. And, and the, you know, it's tough to replace those kind of players. So WPIO, Armstrong 24, Indiana nothing kickoff being presented by grand beginnings children's center get your children ready to shine at grand beginnings children's center two locations in indiana they also are supporting our teddy bear fun drive thank you grand beginnings children's center and the kickoff from homer center's brady frazier taken by isaac walinski to the 25 to the 30 runs through a tackle at the 40 heads toward the far sideline with the kicker brady frazier trying to get an angle on him he makes a couple of moves and he has the football all the way to the 31 yard line of homer center outstanding return picking his way Isaac Walensky, and it was the kicker, Brady Frazier, who finally dragged him down. Boy, a problem. This has been a chronic problem covering deep kicks by Homer's kick team. And, and the coach has acknowledged it. He likes to get the ball deep and hope that they can make the play. Once again, they failed to do so. 52-yard return by Walensky. So Portage takes over you got to stop this drive if you're home or center or you're down two scores. It's just going to be a high mountain to climb. 32 appears to be the line of scrimmage. Quarterback, sophomore, Slonick hands it off to Nisbella, the fullback off right tackle, lowers the shoulder, and he's going to be dragged down, I think, by Josh Voluchik and Jackson Arone. Our statistician in the booth, Jerry Rossi, waved everybody out there in radio land. Jerry, no video time for Jerry yet. Our spotter, Jim McLaughlin. Thank you, Jim. Up on the roof, and we'll get to him in a minute as the ball is given to Bodie Leo, a rare carry for Bodie. As a matter of fact, I think that's his first of the season. And Riley Kobaugh and Caleb Palmer combined to bring him down and not too shabby. As they go no huddle here, they go in a hurry. And it's Leo uh, pushing the quarterback, Isaac Easton Slonick, for a first down. They're and they're no huddle, and Homer just not set. They are in the Citizens Ambulance red zone. Becoming a member or donating is very easy this year. Look for the QR codes throughout the community. Community support makes Citizens Ambulance work. And there's a flag that flies. I think we're going to have illegal motion on the Mustangs as Le right. Leo is stopped for a loss. We'll sort that out. Those QR codes will be posted on the actual ambulances at Indiana County football games and other locations in the area over the next few weeks. QR codes can be scanned and will take you to the correct page to become a member of Citizens Ambulance as they take care of modern technology. Where yes. you get out that phone and your camera and boom, you can become a member just like that. Was it motion? Yeah, it was a legal, I thought it was a legal shift, but... Uh Either way, it's a five-yarder, and they can be drive killers. Wildcats can make a big play here. Second down now outside. They back the ambulance, beep, 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 out of the red zone, back to the 22-yard line, and they send a receiver to the left and wing left and right. Slonick, the sophomore quarterback, 
sends Nisbella in motion, and they give to no one. It's play action and running wide open and catching the football for a touchdown is Owen Gauss. Deep in the right corner of the end zone, and he was running free, Ward, and I mean really free as we see a replay on our monitor. There's nobody in the frame within 10 yards, and Swanick has his fourth touchdown pass of the season, and it's 12 to nothing with 10.25 left here in the third quarter. Well, uh, excellent call, well executed. Uh, Homer just bit on the play, on the run, and uh, it's something that they need to be doing a little more of, but unfortunately, the Portage beat them to the punch. So it was Slonik, current coach, to Gauss, who was uh, related to former the former coach. coach. Correct. Vino split backs. Slonik still goes from the shotgun, and he hands it off, and off of the right side, plowing his way into the end zone and delivering a big hit on Jackson. Aron is Walensky. Aron goes down. Walensky does not. And the Mustangs now lead by two touchdowns, and they pick up that lost extra point. It's 14 to nothing as the teams come up filled with 10.25 remaining in the third quarter. The Mustangs with the upper hand, at least for now. It's Portage 14, Homer Center nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Hi, it's Brian from SeaWorld Satellites, your DISH premier local retailer. Upgrade to DISH from DirecTV and get a $300 prepaid MasterCard. Just mention offer code DTV2DISH. Come in or call us today at 724-463-3200, extension 122, to learn more and make the switch to DISH. That's 724-463-3200, extension 122. Offer ends 11-13-23. Eligibility requirements and restrictions apply. Call for full details. Raced in Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club loaded best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in a club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. Yeah! Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. approaches the football, line drive kick, take it at the 18-yard line by Homer Center's Will Jones, cuts toward the center of the field, and he's upended by Bino of the Portage Mustangs. That's like three times he's been on the kick coverage tackle ward, that young man. He's done a good job yeah, for that, that's an Portage Mustangs. Open field tackle. One of the things Will needs to do is, is catch the ball, make one cut upfield. Don't try to run across field. That gives the pursuit way too much time to get there. He is not fast enough to make it to that other edge, so it, it, it's, it would behoove him to make a cut and get what you can straight ahead. Homer Center is not blessed with great team speed. Is that fair? That's very fair, yes. So the Wildcats take over at their own 27-yard line. We'll give you the drive summary after this play. Wildcats go with Dunn under center. Single setback is Landon Hill. And Braden turns, hands it off to Landon. Landon, hard-nosed running as always, out over the 30 to the 31-yard line. Landon in the first half, 13 carries for 54 yards. Jacob Nolan on the tackle for the Portage Mustangs. Inside linebacker, a 5'7", 157-pound senior. As I mentioned, the Mustangs start three seniors, five juniors, three sophomores on defense. Their drive, short field, four plays, 32 yards, took a minute 23. Yeah, they've taken advantage of some kickoff situations and uh, Homer giving up field position. Give to Hill, runs through a tackle. Now he's in the loose to midfield, comes near sideline to the 40. They try to hog tie him down and they do at the 35 yard line. Making a touchdown saving tackle, Owen Gauss. And Homer Center will have the football at the 34-yard line of the Mustangs. Shows the ability Landon has. If he can get him in the second, we've been saying it all year, get him in the secondary, and you can see what he did. 35-yard run by Landon Hill. He ran right through a tackle on that and then dragged a couple guys with him. So the Wildcats have put some drives together, but they haven't been able to finish. So they have a fresh set of downs at the Mustang 34. 
deep setback is Hill, and they give it to him again. And short gain, maybe to about the 32-yard line. Getting up off the bottom of the pile, 58 for the Mustangs and uh, Trent Nisbella and also Jacob Nolan combined to make that tackle. It'll be second down and eight. Ward, maybe your thoughts on going under center with quarterback Braden Dunn under his uh, junior center, Zach Wilson, with that deep look from Hill. It's just seems, more momentum. Yeah, it seems to be giving the, uh, the the blockers a little better opportunity to create gaps for him. I, I still would like to see that lead blocker come in and do a seal block. That gives Landon a little more room to run here. They go double tights, receivers left and right. And it's a quarterback keeper. And Braden Dunn trying to catch the Mustangs off guard. And he does to a degree for about six yards from the 32 down to about the 26-yard line. Fence rocker made that tackle. I asked the athletic director, Cece, if there was any, you know, story behind the name Fence. Um, and she did not know. Sounds like a real good one, huh? Third down and two. Dunn hands it off to Landon. Landon Hill, first down yardage inside the 25, down to about the 23-yard line as the train runs by. No choo-choo jokes, Ward. I'm not the saying anything. The tackle made by Connor <laughs> Bino. Bino. You see the difference. Of it. You're getting a little push on that on that offensive line now, and it's just enough of a crack to get Landon tore into the secondary, into the linebackers, and he's gaining three, four yards, and that's what the homer needs to do. First and ten, the Wildcats looking to answer. Portage's score to give to Hill. Hill runs through one tackle, trying to get to the 15-yard line. Look at the jerseys, three of them, and he never does go down. He's going to pick up at least five. It was Easton Slonick, the free safety, the 5'10", 100, or actually Owen Gauss, 130-pound uh, junior free safety made the stop. But not before Landon, who's approaching 100 yards, picked up about five. It looks like seven, bud. Seven? Look across oh, the yeah. radar. Yep. He just pushed those guys. <laughs> He's spot, a load. Spot is the 16. Now they'll go gun. And uh, let's see if it's going to be Braden taking the direct snap. Now they're going to move in under center. Braden Dunn and drops the football, picks it up, and he's knifed down who slanted across through that B gap and made the tackle. Bodie Leo and uh, no gain on that play. Landon Hill over 100 yards, 18 carries, 105 yards. Next week, I, I wanted to look it up this week. You know, the, not too many games where Landon Hill in his when he's played that he hasn't scored a touchdown i mean there have been a couple shutouts that's obvious there's a give to landon runs through another tackle to the 10 yard line another first down for homer center landon hill running like a man possessed easton slonic made the tackle the wildcats clearly in the citizens ambulance Red Zone, through household memberships, senior memberships, or one-time donations, please be sure to support Citizens Ambulance Service. Community support makes it work. Look for that QR code, too. Give to Landon Hill, Trent Bella, and Walensky for the Portage Mustangs. And a gain of two to the eight-yard line. Landon's getting up a little slow. 545 remaining here in the third quarter. 14-0 Portage. Been a relatively quick game. And we've had some long ones, haven't we? Yeah, a little bootleg here might work. Landon's... Ocean Maritita receiver to the right boundary. Dunn will go under center, Zach Wilson, and he gives to Landon. Landon again runs through one tackle and leans toward the four-yard line. And the Wildcats four yards away from maybe cutting this lead in half and look getting up slowly for the Mustangs on the defensive side was Nick Somerville. As I'm telling you, Hill's been laying the lather here yeah, he on this drive. He, he looks four out. Third and goal from the four. Hill to, or Dunn to Hill again. And Landon, maybe a yard to the three, and that's all. Good defense that time by the Mustangs. Nick Somerville, who I guess wasn't hurt that bad, although he's getting up slowly again. And the Wildcats are going to have to call a timeout. This is too important of a play. They want to be as organized as they can be and try to get the right play call out there. 4.42 remaining in the third quarter. Portage 14, Homer Center nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. 
At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. from Portage Stadium, the Wildcats with a critical fourth down and goal. Actually, no gain on that play prior to the timeout word, so it'll be at the four yard line. You know, I know you've had success running the football, but I think it almost begs for some play action, something, uh, a crossing pattern, but that's just me. What do I know? Well, I, I think you got to at least roll out and, and give Braden a chance to make a play either through the air or run it in. And you have Will, be his call. Will Jones, a receiver to the right. He leads Homer Center with 18 receptions. They go eye formation out of this break. And Braden Dunn, they fake it to Hill, looking. Braden in trouble, throws for Caleb Palmer, deflected around and incomplete. Broken up by the Mustangs, Easton Slonick. And the Wildcats will turn it over on downs and Braden had pressure up the middle and had to throw off of his back foot. Media timeout on the field with 4.35 remaining in the third quarter. Tough break for Homer Center. They continue to trail 14 to nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At the end. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall is located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, featuring everything you need to make your next event shine. Inside the club, you can find members unwinding in the spacious bar and game room, enjoying great food, and just gathering with each other, watching their favorite team. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall, voted best in Indiana County 2023. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. Well, the Wildcats possessed at 11 plays, 69 yards, used five minutes and 45 seconds, did a lot of things well, except they didn't finish, Wart. Yeah, and that's that's twice they've had opportunities. There's Bella in motion, and they give, and let's see if that is Leo, the fullback with the football. A look on the monitor here, it was Leo. Tackled by Caden McAnaldi, and he lost a yard back to the three. With Smithrow injured again, he's down on the sideline, number 33. And he missed time last week, and they got him back. He practiced Wednesday for the first time, and uh, he started. But it just, this offense has a different look when he's out of there. He's very strong from that wing position, six foot, 190 pound junior, and compliments Walensky. Slonick will go from the shotgun, stands in his own end zone, and he hands it off to Walensky. Walensky runs through a tackle of Koba and has a first down. Out to the 14 yard line, Jackson Arone finished it off, but as well as Riley has played, he'd like to have that back, but he's undersized going against Walensky at 6'1", 190. And you see on our replay monitor, he had enough to pick up the first down on the Wildcats. Well, that's actually where they're going to say third and short. My bad. And quarterback Slonick now does pick up the first down. That wasn't a very good spot for Portage's side. I thought he clearly got to the 14-yard line. But now Slonick, the quarterback, gets up to about the 18-yard line where they do have a new set and of downs. He left them out of the hole. With, uh, Homer's defense just not strong enough to do those kinds of things. We've seen them defensively in the past. Past teams have been able to bottle teams up when they're back that far, but gotta they still have a chance here to stop them and get the ball back. First and 10 at their own 18-yard line. Easton Slonick. 
from the gun with backs to his left and right, and they give on a little counter, and into the secondary is Walensky to the 30. It's a foot race. He's to midfield, right sideline, 40 to the 30, to the 25, 20. Ocean Maritita trying to knock him out of bounds. He can't do it, and he takes it the distance. 82 yards for a touchdown to make it 20 to nothing. Outstanding run by Walensky. Not so good on the tackling side for the black and white, and Portage now has a comfortable three-touchdown lead with 2.41 remaining in the football game. It's 20 to nothing. Isaac Walensky, second of the night and ninth of the season. Homer had done a pretty good job of preventing this but uh, that time Walensky got to the corner. Once they turn up field, the Wildcats' lack of speed just is not able to close it down, and uh, that's all it was. Foot race, Walensky wins it. And uh, it's uh, pretty close to being an insurmountable three-touchdown lead, Mark. The long snapper is Brock Miko, holder Gauss, and uh, they're going to run a fake, or it was a bad snap, bad one snap. or the other, and the left, uh, the southpaw, Gauss, looking to throw, and he does, but it's behind the kicker, Easton Slonick. Those are two skilled athletes trying to improvise and make something happen, but the two-point conversion attempt, as it turns out, fails, and the score holds it 20 to nothing as the teams come up field. Portage has tacked on two touchdowns to bust this game open here in the third quarter. It's Mustangs 20, Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WC CS Wildcat Football Network. Hi, everybody. This is the voice of the Wildcats. It's a high snap. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. plays 96 yards, 2 minutes and 14 seconds for the Portage Mustangs. That's okay, Ward, I had it marked down anyway. Okay. I dropped my note from our statistician, Jerry Ross. I stats all night long, brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Jerry wearing his maroon-colored suit, <laughs> his leisure maroon-colored leisure suit tonight. First Commonwealth colors decked out with gold trim. Jerry, the only sponsored statistician, first Commonwealth Bank time to be first. They give him the leisure suit and all. Uh, he's Would show you, but we don't have a camera to get to that side. <laughs> Here's a kick, and it's uh, going to be knocked around, and jumping on it is Connor DeArmond of the Homer Center Wildcats. Upstairs running the camera. Welcome back to Owen Cyani. Owen, I hope you're hearing us up top. You're doing a great job. Good to have you back, buddy. Those boys were under tarp in that rain. That kept them dry, I guess. I want to say hello to Erin, too, Erwin's mom. I know she was under the weather. Seems like that's all we're doing is get well wishes and sympathy wishes. It's uh, been a tough little stretch yeah, it for has. Wildcat Nation it here. It has. A lot of people getting sick. And 239 remaining here in the third quarter. Give what? me a couple of numbers that aren't necessarily good ones on Homer Center's side, word that maybe will shock you after this play. Ball at the 39-yard line. They haven't been marking the ball on, on the scoreboard. I wonder if there's something that uh, went a little bit haywire on the scoreboard. They throw out the flat to Danny Jones. He bobbles it and regains it and has good yardage. 40-45 to the 46-yard line. That's a win on first down of about seven yards on the tackle. And forcing him out was Jacob Nolan. The numbers were this one definitely not good. The Wildcats have allowed 19 touchdowns now on plays of 25 yards or more, and 10 of those 19 
on plays covering 50 yards or more, including Walensky's 82-yard touchdown run. Yeah, and it's stuff that was in the keys. I said they got to stop that. Uh, for the most part, they had tonight, but that last run is a backbreaker. Second and three, give to Landon Hill, who's dragged down nicely by Bodie Leo of the Portage Mustangs. No gain. The other number, this one might surprise you a little bit. Homer Center, what, they last won on um, two weeks ago, right, against Panama Township, 34-14. But they have played 16 games without a two-game winning streak. The last time they were able to string two wins in a row together was the opening two weeks of the 2022 season. <laughs> Dunn throws, and Dan Jones, the intended receiver, knocked away by Trent Nesbella. I don't see Will Jones on the, oh yeah, here he is near side. I was gonna say I don't see him on the field. It's gonna be fourth down now for Homer Center and out comes Brady Frazier, the freshman punter. Yeah, you'd almost think they'd go for this because they're down three scores and they don't, just don't have enough time to score three times. Running the kind of plays they're running. Was it Matt Canada that said they're not built to come from behind? Oh no, he was talking about the Steelers. <laughs> and. The police car went racing out of uh, Portage Stadium, and now the fire whistle going off, and the Homer Center calls a timeout. See some smoke here. Clock is continuing to run. 110 remaining here in the foot, 113 remaining in the third quarter. Timeout on the field. Portage leading 20 to nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. the timeout and the sirens which are still going off the fire whistle up in town Brady Frazier ready to receive the snap from Danny Jones the long snapper it's a little bit low fielded nicely by Frazier who gets a nice kick away it's backing Owen Gauss and uh, he lets it uh, go and roll inside the 10 yard line and that's where Portage will take over you don't like that do you when they do that no, you got to catch it. You're back there for a purpose, and that is to catch the ball. And you, you got the protection of the fair catch if you're not comfortable. So, 112 left. It. Let's and see where they put the football down at the 10 yard line. It does appear. If you're a Wildcat fan, you need a turnover terribly bad. They've only had one, and they've had opportunities tonight, Mark. I'm sure you agree, and uh, yep. just Could, stalled. And that, finish that, drives. That, that hurts. That hurts. Portage has extended a six to nothing lead to twenty to nothing. Two freshmen and a sophomore. The give to Walensky. Walensky makes a nice move, runs through a tackle with the 20-30. This could be another foot race. Ocean Maritita trying to get a hold of him, and he does, and drags him down at the 40-yard line. But that'll be a gain of 50, as Walensky almost took another one to the house. Jim McLaughlin, our spotter in the booth, pointing out an awfully young D-line out there now with uh, Caleb McAnaldi, uh, freshman. Also... Caleb Normand in there defensively, a freshman. Jackson Taylor, he's a freshman. Yikes, or soft, Jackson's a Taylor, uh, Jackson Taylor's a sophomore actually, but young group. And they got exposed right there. First and 10 at the Wildcat 40, 30 seconds left here in the quarter. Quarterback Easton Slonick, play action, going to throw deep for Bodie Leo. He takes it at the 15, to the 5, to the goal line. Did he get in? Touchdown. Yes, he did. 40-yard touchdown pass. Easton Slonick, second of the night and fifth of the season to Bodie Leo. 
who grabs his third of the season on the receiving end. And wow, it's 26 to nothing. Portage has blown this thing open. That was a short 90 play touchdown drive. It's 26 to nothing. Uh, replay and uh, both corners just let Leo go by and then turn to chase him. And uh, let's give Slonic credit. He just hung that ball up and he ran under it. Boy, that is smoke that's coming over this field. I yeah, it is. Fog. I don't think it's fog either. I can smell it. Mustangs will go for two. Slonic with a pistol back. Bino goes from the gun and he gives to the wing and he goes into the end zone. How does that happen, Ward? Untouched. The same play. Walensky. Yeah, it's the same play. That's what's frustrating. There's no adjustment to it. That was Walensky untouched. All right. It's 28-0 Portage. We're going to have a kickoff to the Wildcats again with 18 and a half seconds left in the third quarter. It's Portage 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. Looking to experience luxury with your next vehicle? Then look no further than Luther Lincoln. From the full-size Lincoln Navigator to the mid-size Lincoln Aviator or the Lincoln Nautilus and Corsair crossovers, Luther has the Lincoln you want. With complimentary pickup and delivery for service or being able to schedule your service appointments online, Luther Lincoln wants to make your experience a pleasant one. Luther Lincoln, your choice for Lincoln. Route 119, Homer City. Click on LutherLincoln.net. the kickoff and the return Brady Frazier gets to the 30 yard line where he's manhandled there by Luke was it Shelton Jimmy Stohan of uh, the Mustangs on the kick coverage team Ward I mentioned uh, tidy short drive how about two plays 90 yards as they put the Luther Ford vehicle into overdrive 54 second touchdown drive and now the Wildcats have given up 20 touchdowns on plays of 25 or more and 11 of them well no that was only 40 so I was yeah. going to say 11 over well, 50 it's, it's, it's just bad the enough fact that, you know they've been doing that early in the games and they were they were very competitive and then all of a sudden they fell apart boy look at that smoke holy smoke smoke holy smoke smoke to give to Landon Hill, who's been smoking hot for the Wildcats tonight. He's had a good ball game. You can't deny the senior of that. And on the final play of the quarter, drive starting, by the way, at the Homer Center 32-yard line. And that's going to be the final play of the quarter, owned by Portage. They put 22 points on the board. Blowing the game wide open after three, thanks to friends of Shereen Hess for, for uh, providing coverage of the third quarter. It's Portage 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network from a smoke-covered Portage Stadium. Back after this. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group, our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty, that's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. Colonial 
Diamond Medical Supply on Oakland Avenue in Indiana. Official supplier for sports teams medical supplies. Hill, the carry up to the 39-yard line on the opening play of the fourth quarter. Nick Somerville, who's had an outstanding game for the Mustangs, made the tackle. Third down and three. Deep back as uh, Braden Dunn goes under center. He lost the handle on the snap, and it goes from bad to worse for Homer Center. He does recover, but it'll be fourth down and about three to go. By the way, I was told that is indeed fog hanging over as we look at the replay on our monitor, not of the fog, but of the mishandled snap. And it'll be fourth down, and the Wildcats will go for it. So, no, they won't. They just send nope. in Brady. Yep, they send the punt team, I think, the initial waving of the white towel. Was. Yeah, pretty much. Dropping back to receive the punt, Owen Gauss. It looks like they're going to bring pressure from the edge, and they get a nice block there. Give credit to Cody Bell, who picked up the pressure, and the kick taken by Gauss, and he's tackled with good kick coverage downfield by Danny Jones. So Portage, well, you see a little extra hop in their step as they race out onto the field with the 28 to nothing lead. There was a big fire. I heard the guys talking earlier in the booth. Oh, we heard a fire uh, siren go off. Yesterday, last night, there was a big fire. This didn't appear, and then suddenly the fire truck took off in the police car, and that's usually an indication that there's something wrong. Something going on, right? Well, okay. They said it's fog. We'll take their word for it. Didn't know you could smell fog, though. But. Ball at the 29-yard line. Mustangs with a four touchdown lead. They have twin backs behind Swanick with a pistol, kind of a power pistol look. And they hand it off to Wilinski, and the Wildcats do a good job that time. Josh Voluchik, he's part of the AM 1160 tandem. Josh wears 11, and his brother, or uh, Josh wears, or Sean wears 11, and Josh wears 60. So. Oh, isn't that His clever? grandfather, Sticky, has a hat, wildcat hat, that has number 11 on one side <laughs> and 60 on the other. I kind of like that. We should pay for that, right? Yeah. Get him a new one. Second down and nine. Walensky comes near side, and he's tripped up or he slipped as he was looking to make the cut, one or the other. Now there's flags and some extracurricular activity. And... Getting into a little scuffle was Joshua Harshberger of Boy, Portage. Coach and Page says throw him out. <laughs> Jackson <laughs> Taylor. We'll see. Yeah, there Maybe could be a replay here. Could on. be an ejection. I don't know if we have a replay. Of the, we don't have a replay I of that. I didn't see the uh, what caused the altercation. Well, it happened way away from yeah, the ball the on the opposite the side. Pretty Might have been a case play, of uh, Harshberger staying with his block a little bit. Too long for the liking of Jackson Taylor. It been, I think it was Taylor from Homer Center. The officials are discussing things. And let's see what we're going to have here. Might have an ejection, Ward. Just the way they're talking. And well, somebody's walking off here. Number three, that's quarterback, isn't it? Oh, he's surely not ejected. I, I wouldn't think personal foul, Portage. I think he. No, I don't think he's the guilty party. And an ejection. an ejection on Portage. No, I don't think he was either. It's always good to be ranked number one. The gold standard of care at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville is once again not gone unnoticed as IRMC at Chestnut Ridge was voted the best urgent care and walk-in clinic in the best of Indiana County contest. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and located on Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better. Part of the IRMC family. Better health, better life. And the ejection of the Portage uh, Mustang, Josh Harshberger. And that's a big loss. A sophomore starting right tackle, 6'1", 255. And Had it been a close game, it would have been. Well, a but he'll have to sit out next week by PIAA rule. And the Mustangs have pretty tall order. They're going to go against undefeated United Valley without Archburg. Yeah, that makes it a big loss. First and forever for Portage. And here comes Trent Nisbella to the 20, 25, 30. 
and he turns first and forever into second and manageable because he ripped off about 20 yards on that play. Owen o Ocean Maritita on the tackle for the Homer Center Wildcats. Just incredible the success that teams have around the edge against yeah, this Homer and, Center and this, defense. This basically running inside reverses and things that you saw in midget football that they're running here and with great success. They're getting to the corners, there's gaps they can cut up, and then, as we've said, the speed. Homer just can't run them down. Seventeen yard gain for Nisbella, who's now the quarterback. Or actually it's fourth down because that was a dead ball foul, so they did lose the down, and now we have a delay of game on Portage. Okay, that was was not the Yeah, we're getting third it down. sorted out here. Fog seems to be lifting. A little bit. Or the fire's out, one or, or the, the other. The fire is out. <laughs> They backed them up after the delay of game penalty to the 27 yard line. Braden Dunn back deep. We'll have reaction from both coaches for Coach's Corner tomorrow uh, as well. We'll record it down on the field. You want to handle those duties, Ward? I guess so. And kick is away from Dunn. Oh, beautiful. And Dunn's going to allow it to roll dead at the 21 yard line. And the Wildcats will take over after a nice punt. Leo just kind of slid to his right and kicked it to his right, and that was away from Dunn. He didn't have a chance to catch it. 53-yard punt with the roll. That was a clever move. And the Wildcats will take over, trailing 28 to nothing at their own 21-yard line. And you play for pride now, WA, and try to yeah, make something positive. They had happen. some things going offensively and just kind of, as we said a couple of times, they just stalled out. They need to finish one just to feel good about themselves. Still got a fair amount of season to go and a couple of wins could make a difference. But Go to West Shimokin next Friday night before finishing with back-to-back -back home games against Purchase Line who has some injuries. And now the officials, where were they at? They're was, just now coming. They had up a this. little coffee break in the middle of the field there, hmm. and they're drifting back. I didn't even notice that they were 50 yards away from the line of scrimmage, <laughs> and now they hustle there's, back into. There's two down below us here. I don't think that's the position they're supposed to be in. <laughs> they're moving up to where they should be now. Junior center Zach Wilson out over the football for Homer Center, 5'9", 233 pounder. Braden Dunner, uh, Dunn stays in at quarterback, and look at Landon Hill. He's got the dark jersey, mud-covered jersey. It's wet, it's soaked, but he's had a strong game tonight, Landon, over 100 yards rushing, and on first down, he takes it over the 25, up to about the 27-yard line, where he was stopped by good old fence rocker. I think this is the most consistent running game we've seen from Landon this year. Get Landon's updated stats, Jerry, who's on the other side of the window after this next play. Second down and three, and they feed it to Landon again. This time they spin him around and drag him down at about the 30-yard line, a yard shy of the first down, maybe two. Clock continues to roll, 7.50 to play in the football game. Trent Nespella on the tackle, third leading tackler on this Mustangs defense that is ranked seventh in the Heritage Conference. And they've played a pretty strong football game tonight. Landon 23, oh no, let's add four to that. 27 carries for 133 yards. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Slot receivers Danny Jones, Jackson Arones to the right boundary. Will Jones up top if you're watching. And Braden Dunn play uh, Read option, he keeps it and has a first down up to about the 35 yard line, maybe the 36, where he was stopped by Logan Grove, called his game, uh, name a lot here tonight. So a fresh set of downs for the Wildcats at their own 36 yard line. Our first Commonwealth Bank post game show will feature head coach Greg Page, some comments from Mustangs head coach Marty Slonick as well. Radio replays, which are all from the team wearing green and white tonight thus far, leading 28 to nothing. Dunn throws, and there's going to be an interference penalty on Trent Nisbella as he didn't give Will Jones a chance. We'll see if we get a replay. Here it is, Ward, as we look at our monitor. 
And Dunn takes the snap, looks to the right, and then throws left. And getting there just a little bit early, was it wasn't Nespella, it was 18, I think. And that would be Owen Gauss. So pass interference penalty will move the football into Mustang territory to the 49-yard line where the Wildcats have been a few times on the right side of the field, but uh, they have not been able to dent the end zone. One drive stalling at the four-yard line when this game was still uh, in reach. There's a long pass, in incomplete, intended for Will Jones on a fly pattern and it will be second down and 10. Yeah, Will had an off night. Uh, he had a couple drops, which you don't typically see from him. We come to you from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. People Forward Banking, S&T Bank member FDIC. He was open there, but overthrown. Portage, eight penalties for 75 yards tonight. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Read option and Braden's gonna keep it around the left end in front of the Homer center bench. He fumbled the football and let's see who has it. Portage, yep, it's the Mustangs who have the football and Trent, Trent Nisbella comes up with it as the Wildcats cough it up and turn it over and the Mustangs will take over at their own 44 yard line. Too bad for Braden, but somebody laid a hit on him and he lost the football and it's slippery to boot. On the fumble recovery. Yeah, it's, it's just been one of those nights of Wildcats you shooting know, themselves in the foot and just unable to finish promising drives. Wildcats, were, that's their ninth turnover of the season. That's not too bad no. here in the seventh week of the season. They're a negative four, though, because their defense is only forced four. So Portage with... Sophomore quarterback Slonick gives to Bino. Bino comes near side, 40, 35, 30, to the 20. It's a race to the left pylon, and he's going to win the race. It's a touchdown for the Portage Mustangs as Bino takes it 56 yards, and we're one point away from the mercy rule. It's 34 to nothing. Portage over the Homer Center Wildcats. Another splash play for the opponent. Unfortunately, if you're a Homer Center fan, and Bino ran through a tackle, and uh, the Wildcats' lack of speed ward, they just couldn't catch him. Can't catch him, and uh, you know, again, the, if you just wrap him up a little and slow him down at the line of scrimmage, which is where that hit took place, they had an opportunity, but they could not do that, and off he went. To attempt uh, the extra point, it is Easton Slonick out of the hold of Gauss. Miko, the long snapper, and the kick is blocked. So the mercy rule is not in effect. But the teams come up field with 618 remaining in the game. It's been a disappointing second half if you're a Homer Center fan, as a six to nothing deficit has turned into 34 to nothing portage right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Thirty-four to nothing lead. Riley Kobaugh back deep, but it's an up man, Brady Frazier, who takes it inside the twenty to the thirty, and Brady trying to get to the thirty-four yard line where he's popped and popped pretty good. I think that was Logan Grove and Isaac Walinski on that hit, 
And the Wildcats, with 6-10 remaining in the football game, will have another offensive possession. And Ward, right now they're staring at their second shot out of the season. They were blanked in a similar way at River Valley, 42 to nothing, and nothing against the Portage Mustangs, but they're not River Valley. No, they just made three big, long runs for scores. Homer had pretty much played them even up until then, but then it just got away from the Wildcats. Football at the 34-yard line, and Braden Dunn under center with Landon Hill. The lone setback, and Landon is hit in his own backfield. Somebody's got to block somebody, Ward, eventually. Yeah. Seven weeks into the season, some of the line play, Trent Nesbella, Jimmy McLaughlin telling me made that tackle, but here comes a lot of white jerseys. And I was going to say, at some point, you got to either make changes because the offensive line, there really hasn't been growth this season. That's been a disappointment, I'm sure, for this coaching staff. Yeah, it, it, they just haven't given Homer what they needed, and maybe that required some adjustments, too, on how they approached it. The eye formation was working very well. Why they quit doing it, I don't know. You will be interviewing Coach Page tonight, so you'll be able to ask. The give to Voluchik around the left end and uh, tackled after a short gain. 5.20 to play here in the football game, 34 to nothing, Portage. And the Wildcats with uh, some uh, fresh jerseys out there on that O-line, including Hayden Bentz, a freshman, Gabe Rufner, a sophomore, Dom Shimko, a freshman, Chris Morgan, back from injury, a freshman. And they really stand out there, right? The Tide. Yeah. I think all of those parents use Tide because those jerseys are nice, bright white. <laughs> <laughs> haven't had occasion to get in the game and get them dirty too much. <laughs> Third down and about five to go for the Wildcats. They stay with Braden Dunn at Q. And Braden hands it off. And uh, a new player in there with the football. That might be Cody Bell. And it was Cody, and he stopped shy of the 40-yard line, just shy. So it'll be fourth down and four, and Wildcats' Brady Frazier's out there, and the Wildcats will, again, wave the white towel and punt it away. Yeah, and uh, Coach Slonik has taken out most of his starters. They're down to our right here. They're having a good time. I don't think they have the long snapper, Danny Jones, out there. And we're, well, you still have 21 seconds. Now Danny there slips out there. <laughs> You've got time to snap it. Brady Frazier, last couple of snaps have been a little bit low. This one is a bullet back to Brady. And the kick is away up into these lights, and they're going to allow it to bounce. And it takes a favorable homer center roll back near the 20 yard line to about the 21, where it's touched down by the long snapper, Danny Jones, a 40 yard punt. And no return, and we have immediate timeout on the field with the score, Portage 34 in the Homer Center Wildcats. Nothing with 3.39 remaining. We will continue from Portage Stadium after this on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122, or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. Raced in Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in a club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. Yeah! Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. With you at Portage Mustangs with some new players in there. We'll take over at their own, what, word 21, right? That looks like that. They're not, not there must quite. be something uh, wrong with the scoreboard. No, because no, it's it's part of shy that. of the 20. 
new quarterback in there with uh, the number 37. That is Ethan Stripmatter, a freshman. And Jerry, who had that ball? Number five, that was Luke Stohan. Six seconds left, Kanawha Valley scores. It's 21-20, Kanawha Township over Valley with the extra point pending. <laughs> One of those teams want to win, very, well, they both want to win badly. They're going to go to overtime, that, perhaps. That, that, could, that could be. Final, Marion Center 12, Penns Manor 6. Holy smokes. United Valley remains undefeated in a big, convincing way, 46 to nothing over Purchase Line. Wow, that, that's a shock. Second down in seven. And the uh, young quarterback, Strip Matter, hands it off, and not a lot going on there for Lucas Gathers, a sophomore of the Mustangs. So it'll be third down. Uh, let's see here. Cambria Heights 27, West Shimokan 15 was the last score I saw mm. with that one. And end of three, it was Northern Cambria 20, River Valley 14. Ooh, big game there. Yeah, it is. Down That's at Salzburg. Undecided yet. A lot of the fans, I understand, they were checking out the Jerry Rossi statue out in front of Salzburg, <laughs> the old Salzburg <laughs> Junior yeah. Senior High School. It's become a tourist attraction. Oh, my, the birds love it. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and eight to go. It's very similar to the Michael Jordan statue in front of the United Center. Uh -huh. Strip matter hands off, and we try to do the best to wind this thing down. We will have both coaches on the post-game show from down on the field. The ball carrier was Luke Stohan of the Mustangs. We are down to 100 seconds remaining. Fourth down, and the Mustangs, I think, are going to send out the punt team. Or are they? Maybe just roll with it here. Our timeouts tonight, by the way, have been presented by Luxembourg Jewelers in the Indiana Mall in downtown Indiana, serving Indiana and the surrounding area since 1916. We come to you from our ST Bank broadcast booth, People Forward Banking, ST Bank member FDIC. 16 seconds on the play clock. It is fourth down. And number 11, Tegan Kick, is just into the huddle, but I'm not sure if he's there to kick or not, or in this case, punt. I don't know if Tegan's. They're going to call timeout. They don't have a punter, maybe. Either. 54 seconds remaining in the game. We'll take a timeout from Portage Stadium in Portage, Pennsylvania. It's the Mustangs rolling tonight, and we did it, Ward, without playing your theme song of the Mustangs, you know, the old Mr. Ward song. It's Bless 34 you. to nothing. Mustangs over the Wildcats on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group. Our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty. That's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Going to roll inside the 25 down to about the 22-yard line. I don't know that this will come on Renda Digital TV, but we know it will on WCCS. Ward, it was 2015 that this song made its debut and climbed the charts. Michael, you have it? Hello, I'm Mr. Ward. Oh, uh, man. I thought that was buried. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Ward. Go right to the source and ask the horse. He'll give you the answer about football, of course. He's always on a steady course. Talk to Mr. Ward. 
people yakety yak a streak and you gotta love it man but mr ward will never speak we need a smile game unless he had something to say a horse is a horse of course of course but this ward will talk to his voice his horse and you say you never heard of a talking horse well listen to this <laughs> i am mr ward <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> And uh, the Wildcats <laughs> fumble the snap from center, and Portage has it at the 10-yard line. That never gets old. It debuted in 2015. He do not realize the effort that was put in to get <laughs> putting that together we without lost my knowledge. <laughs> total control of this uh, broadcast. But, uh, yeah, that climbed the charts. Yeah, I think bet. it made it top 10 yeah. in yes, 2015. Michael would have the numbers. Maybe. <laughs> so the Mustangs off of the turnover will take over at the Wildcat 10-yard line, and I'm sure they're probably just going to take a knee. Appears they're in that formation. Victory formation, and it was a convincing second half that did it. And they do take a knee in the final 30 seconds. They're going to tick off the clock in what was a convincing, as it turned out, Portage Mustang victory over the Homer Center Wildcats. Teams will shake hands disappointing performance because I think the Wildcats thought this was a game that perhaps could go their way. They trailed just six to nothing at the half, but Portage exploded for 28 second half points to win it 34 to nothing. Second time this season Homer Center has been shut out. Stay with us for our first Commonwealth Bank post game show. It's coming up next. Mr. Ward will be down on the sideline interviewing both coaches. When we return, we'll have radio replays to 34 nothing Mustangs on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group, our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty, that's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. Every moment. Hi, it's Brian from SeaWorld Satellites, your Dish Premier local retailer. Upgrade to Dish from DirecTV and get a $300 prepaid MasterCard. Just mention offer code DTV2DISH. Come in or call us today at 724-463-3200, extension 122, to learn more and make the switch to Dish. That's 724-463-3200, extension 122. Offer ends 11 23 Eligibility requirements and restrictions apply. Call for full details. Hi, my name is Zachary, and this is a bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for six area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com, equal opportunity employer. Welcome you back to Portage Stadium. All Portage, especially in the second half, en route to a 34 to nothing blanking of Homer Center. Second time Homer Center has been shut out this season as they dropped two and five. Portage in a playoff position now at three and four. Homer Center turned it over on downs early in the game, went for it on fourth and two at their own 37, didn't gain a yard, and Portage made them pay four plays later. The Mustangs were on the board. 
and they weren't sure if he was going to play. There's that inside reverse. They give it to Wilinski up the center of the field into the end zone for a touchdown from 12 yards out. Homer Center's defense did not stay home at all, and Smithrow scores from 12 yards out, or Wilinski that was, on that reverse. His eighth touchdown of the season, and Portage takes advantage of the short field. They lead 6 to nothing at the 8-28 mark. Wildcats had a couple of opportunities in the first half. A fumble recovery by Caleb Palmer set them up at the Portage 25, but they couldn't convert. We headed to the second half with just a 6 to nothing Portage Mustangs lead. But coming out in the second half, they got a 52-yard kickoff return by Isaac Wilinski. They advanced the uh, football down to the Wildcat 22-yard line and went up top. Sends Nisbella in motion, and they give to no one. It's play action and running wide open and catching the football for a touchdown is Owen Gauss. Deep in the right corner of the end zone, and he was running free, Ward, and I mean really free as we see a replay on our monitor. There's nobody in the frame within 10 yards, and Swanick has his fourth touchdown pass of the season and it's 12 to nothing with 10.25 left here in the third quarter. Two point conversion run by Isaac Walensky made it 14 to nothing at the 10.25 mark. Wildcats got a 35 yard run by Landon Hill to the Portage 34. He went over 100 yards in the game but they stalled at the four yard line. Portage starting at their own four, a big play, three plays they had it out to the 18 yard line and then Isaac Walensky did the rest. From the gun with backs to his left and right, and they give on a little counter and into the secondaries. Walensky to the 30. It's a foot race. He's to midfield, right sideline, 40 to the 30, to the 25 20. Ocean Maritita trying to knock him out of bounds. He can't do it, and he takes it the distance 82 yards for a touchdown to make it 20 to nothing. Outstanding run by Walensky. Not so good on the tackling side for the black and white. And Portage now has a comfortable three touchdown lead with 2.41 remaining in the football game. It's 20 to nothing. Isaac Walensky, second of the night and ninth of the season. Wildcats went three and out. Portage took over at their own 10-yard line after a 44-yard punt, a 50-yard run by Isaac Walensky, and then on the very next play, Easton Slonick back to the air. Quarterback Easton Slonick, play action, going to throw deep for Bodie Leo. He takes it at the 15, to the 5, to the goal line. Did he get in? Touchdown. Yes, he did. 40-yard touchdown pass. Easton Slonick, second of the night and fifth of the season to Bodie Leo, who grabs his third of the season on the receiving end. And, wow, it's 26 to nothing. Portage has blown this thing open. That was a short... 90 play touchdown drive. It's and just to finish off, finish it off, another big play for Portage. It was Connor Binot, a 56-yard touchdown run with 6.18 remaining to set the final. Portage 34 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. We're going to keep it here as the band plays on. Ward Hilliard down on the field with head coach Greg Page as uh, the St. Francis marching band is playing. So you'll probably pick some of this up. Let's get on to Ward right now. We're turning the microphone on as the band plays on here and uh, should be able to get them now. We're, we're talking to uh, head coach Greg Page and uh, coach, you were very much in that game. Actually, I felt you had maybe some control there. Just a couple drives stalled out on you. Yeah, we did. And we're in a couple sets where, you know, it's really just grinded out and, and there's not a whole lot else off of those things. And we were grinding it, and then we get stuck in a third and long, and you got to try to do something else. Credit the Portage. They stopped us when we did have some drives going, and we didn't stop them. It, it's it's frustrating, again, that we you know, we just uh, we, we let up big plays and, and take ourselves out of games. Yeah, most of the game, your defense was doing well. But then there were the breakdowns there in the second half. I don't know if they got tired or they just uh, didn't tackle well. Well, the other team should be tired, too. I, that's not a good excuse. I mean, 
Uh, I credit them. They had a couple call back, too, longer runs that would have maybe broken it open a little earlier. But, you know, at times we did. We, we got some stops, but we're just not consistent enough. And it's all the way around. And it's 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 my fault. I mean, you got we got to be able to be consistent in all three phases, and we're not. We, we Again, we have a nice deep kickoff, and we just – we don't get down there at the beginning of the second half. We don't get guys down. We got dive at feet. They started to drive at the 30. Fortunately, we stopped them, but then we got a long fill. We, you know, just ran out of gas. But Portage deserves the credit. They, they made the plays when they had to. You look for a first down with the, with the fourth and two in your own territory. Was that just to try to get some spark in that offense? No, it was a miscommunication. We wanted to try to jump them off sides and. I guess we didn't. I didn't communicate that properly enough, and then the, you know, we got a snap, and all of a sudden we're trying to scramble around. So I'll take responsibility for that because obviously we had guys that didn't know what was going on there. I was trying to get them to jump, and then we were going to punt if they weren't going to jump. But again, I, you know, it's uh, next, it, it's put it's putting us out in that in that situation. It puts us on the line there, and then they take it in for a quick score. Well, I I, I see the team getting better, and then they have these drops, and I'm sure that's frustrating to you. I, I know you guys are going to turn something around here because I see an improvement in the play. I, I imagine Landon Hill's pretty tired right now. He is, and he, you know, when we gave him a crease, they couldn't tackle him consistently when you give him a crease, and that's what we need. But, but then we, you know, and they start loading things up a little bit, and you got to come off the ball better. They're bigger, but you know, the the bottom line is what I what frustrated me in the second half was I'm seeing faces of where I don't know if guys really want to, you know keep at it at times and you can't do that I mean you know you're down 14 21 nothing even 28 nothing you got to find another gear you got to find a way and and um we're, we're learning and we're growing but we're just not there yet well I know you're going to work on it and you're going to turn it around the best you can and that's all you can expect from any coach and you've got your hands full West Shemokin's next week I'm sure you're going to be ready though I hope so we got to get better because we got the we're going over we're playing the big bull I mean, that's the best way to describe them. And, you know, you just physically, you have to be ready for games like this to, to, to get into people, block them, and tackle them. And we do it for flashes, but we don't do it enough. So that's where we have to continue to find ways as coaches to, to draw that out of them. Well, we wish you great well. group of kids. Listen, there's a great group of kids. They're, they're, they're nice kids, and, you know, they want to be coachable, but but then they're sometimes they're, they're getting straight away from, you know, they're looking in the backfield or this or that or – but, I mean, I'll, 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 t I'll tell them, I, you know, we've lost some games, but I'm enjoying it, and I think we all are. But you, know, everybody wants to see the results, so that's when it gets a little frustrating. Well, there's no quit from what I can see, and I can see a team that's trying to get better. I think that's going to happen. Yeah, no, yeah are their kids aren't. They're not going to quit. Like I said, they're good kids, good attitudes, good students. Just got to keep working. I don't know any other way. Well, thanks for the time. I know you want to get out of here. All right, buddy. Thank you. you got serenaded by that band anyway. <laughs> All right, Ward. Thank you very much. And our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show will continue from Portage Stadium. We'll see if we can grab Marty Slonick. If not, we will have stats and say goodnight before you know it as the St. Francis University Marching Band performs for the crowd. Turned out rather pleasant right now. 34 nothing. not so pleasant if you're a Wildcat fan. Portage blanks the Wildcats on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At the Y, it's a... Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group. Our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty. That's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. Every moment. I'm Will Jones. I'm Ocean Jet. We never drop the ball on the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore if your wall back insurance needs.
Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallbeck Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallbeck Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbeckinsurance.com. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. Hi, my name is Zachary, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for six area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com, equal opportunity employer. Eight to six, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, eight to five, and Saturday from eight to noon. For all your tire and auto needs, call Lias Tire. Have you tried McDonald's world famous burgers lately? The number one selling Big Mac, or the quarter pounder with cheese, cooked fresh each time it's ordered. With world famous fries and a soft drink, McDonald's three locations in Indiana and in Blairsville. First Commonwealth Bank postgame show continues on WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM, and online at WCCSradio.com with the voice of the Wildcats, Mark Burdick. Thank you very much, Michael, as the St. Francis Band uh, continues to play here. Let's give you the stats that shaped up this 34 to nothing victory for Portage. First of all, Isaac Walensky, 190 yards rushing, Two touchdowns on 11 carries. Beno, five carries, 73 yards and a touchdown. Trent Nisbella, seven carries, 45 yards. Quarterback Easton Slonick, five carries for 25 yards. All in total, 36 rushes for 340 yards on the ground for the Portage Mustangs. Through the air, they only passed four times. Slonick two for four. Both of the completions went for touchdowns, 63 yards. They rolled up 403 yards of total offense. For the Homer Center Wildcats, a big night for Landon Hill, although he didn't dent the end zone. He toted the football 28 times for 133 yards. Braden Dunn, the quarterback, 10 carries, 30 yards. Total rushing attempts, 41 for Homer Center for 153 yards of net yardage. Passing just three of nine through the air for 17 yards. Homer Center, 170 yards, and Portage with 403. And at the half Ward Hilliard, it was relatively tight at um, 111 for Portage and 74 for Homer Center. So Portage about 300 yards in that impressive second half that saw them put 28 points on the board. Yeah, I don't know how well you can hear us down there. Very but good. It was, uh, he could, you could see the frustration in Coach Page's face. He knew they had an opportunity to uh, maybe even take a lead in this game, and it didn't happen, and then it was just total breakdown. So, you know, those big plays just kill us. Uh, and, uh, it, it just, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a sore that never heals. You know, you get it, it looks like it's getting better, and it's getting better, and then suddenly it's bust open again, and it hurts. And so they've got to figure it out. They've got a huge, huge challenge next week. We'll talk about Shimoka. that, give you the scoreboard out of town scoreboard and we'll tell you about next week we're going to take our final 60 second break of the night as the saint francis band has just concluded their performance portage wins it 34 to nothing over the homer center wildcats you're listening to the first commonwealth bank post post game show right here on the irmc wccs wildcat football network hi it's brian from sea world satellites your dish premier local retailer Upgrade to DISH from DirecTV and get a $300 prepaid MasterCard. Just mention offer code DTV2DISH. 
Come in or call us today at 724-463-3200, extension 122, to learn more and make the switch to DISH. That's 724-463-3200, extension 122. Offer ends 11-13-23. Eligibility requirements and restrictions apply. Call for full details. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. UCCS. Hey. Welcome you back for a final time to Portage Stadium. 34 to nothing. Mustangs blanked the Wildcats on the out-of-town scoreboard. Connemaw Valley ran a two-point conversion with six seconds left to defeat Connemaw Township in the Battle of Heritage Conference newcomers. Valley wins their first game of the year. Township drops to 0 and 7. Heartbreaker for them. 22-21. Valley the winner. Marion Center defeats Penn's Manor 12-6. Cambria Heights explodes on West Shemoke and runs away from them 41-15. Great ball game down at Salzburg tonight, but the Colts, uh, they win 20-14 over River Valley. Colts are now 6-1. River Valley drops to 5-2. United Valley remains undefeated at 7-0. They defeat Purchase Line 46-0. And uh, in the Whippy old uh, last report we had was Armstrong defeating in or de uh, beating Indiana beating. 24 to nothing at the half, but no further updates. As for what's up on the Wildcat agenda, they're going to go face Lou Schwartz and the West Shemokin Wolves next Friday night. We'll be on the air at 6:15. Portage with a tall order against undefeated United Valley on the road. Yeah, it, it behooves the Wildcats to somehow come across with a couple wins. They may still be able to jump Portage. So, uh, but that's neat. It's easy to say and hard to do. We'll see. That's going to do it from Portage Stadium. We, we'll get you off the air for Coach's Corner. Coach, don't go away. So we will have uh, Marty Slonick on Coach's Corner uh, tomorrow morning. We'll interview him in just a moment. But that's going to do it on WCCS and on Renda Digital TV. Big second half for the Portage Mustangs as they defeat the Homer Center Wildcats 34 to nothing. For our studio engineer back in Indiana, Michael Burdig, our digital producer, John Smathers, statistician Jerry Rossi, spotter Jim McLaughlin, and for Ward Hilliard, Mark Burdig, bidding you a very pleasant good evening from Portage. We hope to see you at IUP's homecoming tomorrow. If you can't be there, you can watch it on Renda Digital TV beginning at 10 a.m. From Portage, good night, everybody. You've been listening to an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school.